Hope. Peace, fam. This is ready for all. We got brother. I want you, sir. And elder. Brother Gabar uh, Yeshua Allah. Of the? The Gatton Christ Church. GOCC. GOCC, yes. Um, and we're familiar with you from uh, Sanada TV and also your, your own channel. Or your own? Yeah, with the GOCC NYC. GOCC yeah, NYC, yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. On YouTube. And, um, yeah, so we're, we're big fans of, of, the, of the Hebrew Israelites. They show me a lot of love. The AOC, the Lions of Israel. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, so we got you guys here. Like well, uh, we got a lot going on. You know, the, uh, you know, one of the things that we're very excited about is coming up uh, is the April 5th event that we're actually doing. It's right. a Hebrew Summit Alliance. Um, uh, so staying tuned uh, for that. It's going to be the National Black Theater, April 5th, Sunday. Uh, the doors open at three. Uh, well, we're gonna. That alliance is basically going to be. We're going to be covering several things. We're going to be covering uh, the. Uh, he, there's been other Hebrews Alliance uh, summit, but this is a, a continuation of that. Um, and uh, we're basically going to be be celebrating uh, the Hebrew unity that that is way overdue, despite our you know doctrinal differences. So um, you know. Um, we, that's what's going on. We're very excited about that. Um, we also get ready for the Passover, which is uh, March 28th, Saturday. You know, most of the Hebrews are following. I think they land this year, uh, April 3rd. Yeah. If I'm, you know, we keep it. You know, because we keep the the, the Enoch calendar, uh, which is a little different from, from, from the lunar, but it usually lands around the same week, so forth, so on. So uh, we're excited. It's going to be an exciting with, uh, summer. We had a crazy winter, uh, but now we're gonna. You know, we're very excited towards the future. <coughs> All right, now speak to the fact that there are a few, um, a few Hebrew factions, and now I see that you guys are coming together at a fast rate. It's mm -hmm. like a huge support, and, a, and a, you guys are creating like a, hu a Hebrew nation. Yes. Yeah, speak to that, please. Well, <clears throat> what we are doing is, which is you know unique to, uh, you know, uh, I've been a Hebrew for for 20 years, and, and it's unique that uh, most Hebrew Israelites do do not, you know. Um, come together, even keep feast together, things of that nature. We're trying to change that. Mm -hmm. uh, to, just to give a, a quick brief history on the Hebrew tradition, mm -hmm. what it was all about, and things of that nature. You know, when you go back <clears throat> into many of post-slavery, you have many uh, Hebrew Israelites that are, yep, yeah, it, it's recorded, it's good, okay. Uh, many Hebrew Israelites that are been um, keeping the faith. You know, you have uh, Martin DeLay, you have, uh, uh, what's the other brother, uh, the, the book that you came out with, uh, that you brought out, uh, with the brother that, uh, that you brought out in, in the, the, the presentation where you did uh, with, uh, uh, and rebuttal to Shaka's book. Oh, uh, 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 oh, 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 you have uh, Aluda Equiano. Aluda he, he Equiano. He goes back to the 1700s. He, he'd go back to the 1700s. Right. Um, of course, you, you got, you know, Rabbi Four, Rabbi Matthew. So you always had, um, Nat Turner. Nat Turner. Mm -hmm. Um, which, uh, uh, Cro Cro what's the brother? Uh, uh, oh, Cro uh, Crowley. Crowley. Uh, um, from from uh, yeah. the Church of God. Sanders Crowley. Yeah. 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 So you had many he brothers that have not only have kept the, the, the traditions and knew they were Hebrews. You know, there's a myth that uh, many African Americans uh, post slavery began to adopt the Hebrew culture mm. because they learned it from. Jewish people, right. uh, or they upon themselves just read the Bible and said, okay, this fits like me, which is, that's also some truth to that, because, you know, you could clearly see the Bible in regards to the personality, the struggles, uh, and the prophecy, uh, you could clearly see yourself in the Bible as an African and Latino American, mm -hmm. but they knew they were Hebrew because they grew up with that, that tradition, and that tradition it came from Africa and was, was, uh, it, it went over the shores. So when, uh, in the 60s and 70s, many sects of, of Judaism came to, uh, to emerge uh, from the commandment keepers, because the commandment keepers were at that time uh, the, the main hub of Hebrew Israelite culture. Uh, then you have other sects like uh, Behamin, you have um, um, other brothers that broke off, like uh, Yahweh, Abba, ben Yahweh. Yahweh Ben Yahweh, uh, other brothers like um, uh, uh, Abba Bibbins and things of that nature, who uh, that's the branch that I came out of, out of in, the, in the early 90s. So, it, uh, it, you know, 
when all the different branches came to to to, to uh, get, came to be, and it became a situation that uh, they began to start different organizations because they did not agree with one another. Mm. We are the children of those divisions. Okay. So now those our ch the children are saying, you know what? We're not going to do the sins of our fathers. Mm. We're going to come together. The, and despite our differences, right. it's despite our doctrinal differences, because usually these type of divisions usually start either two things, either because of personality or, or issues with the leadership, and right. they, they use doctrine as an excuse for the divine, mm -hmm. or there's actual legitimate differences on doctrine that they cannot see eye to eye, and, 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 and there's different branch of, of, of uh, Hebrewism uh, emerge from that. So us being the children and understanding that uh, we see how our fathers did it, right. And we're going to learn from that. We always, you know, give honor to the brothers and, and, and they, they paid the way for us to be here mm -hmm. and keep those traditions. But we're going to try to do it better. We're going to try to do it better. So, so I'm very excited about this, the summer uh, and the summer. But you can add on yeah. to that. Uh, the, the whole uh, the fiasco with the debate and everything coming as a result of what's transpired in the past few months has only expedited that process. That's mm -hmm. why now you see everybody rushing together so quickly as you put it right uh you know because it put us around a common uh uh, uh you know uh direction you know right. we had a common goal we had a common task to accomplish and you know it, it forced us to unite so we had we were forced to put some of these petty differences aside and now we realizing that the brotherhood is stronger than we could have even thought mm -hmm. because now we, we we close brothers with with different camps now so this right. is a beautiful beginning Right, and, so, and it's only the beginning. Uh, we, only the beginning. Yeah, we really want to take a, we want to reach out to every single Hebrew Israelite. Um, right now, the the summit is, is is an introduction of that, and also within the summit, and, and this document, uh, this uh, 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 presentation, we're gonna be bringing out a lot of stuff that was not able to come out in the, the debate with Kemet mm -hmm. and things of that nature to get the full understanding that why we believe what we believe and right. why we, we take the stand where we stand and things of that nature. So it's going to be a lot of that and also it's going to be some surprises. <laughs> so, so stay tuned. Beautiful. Now I saw on Facebook that you guys are going to have a, a camp, a two or three day camp in like Brother Georgia, Nancy. if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Brother Nancy, he's going to be, you know, springing board that. I know he did one last year and this is the second year of that. Unfortunately, I couldn't make it to that, you know, that one, but I'm going to try, I'm going to definitely make it to this one. Okay. Um, and um, it's just a continuation of the building. Of the yeah. building, yeah. Now, in regards to that event, now I'm not a Hebrew per se, but is this a closed event for specific Hebrews or yes. is it? I mean, there's certain things that we're going to be opening up to the public and it's yeah. going to be other things for, for, for the Hebrews. You know, okay. the, 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 uh, the presentation is open for the public. Um, I think only the vendors uh, that are going to be there most are going to be Hebrews or are going to be vendors that are okay by the Hebrew culture. Right. So there's going to be, you know, we have to know what you're selling and it, it is, if it's co-aligned with our culture, then you're more than welcome. Okay. Uh, but the, the camp, that's going to be only Hebrews. Uh, so there's gonna be certain events gonna be open to the public. Other yeah. events gonna be for for the Hebrews. Right, right, right. Now I was at an event about a week ago. It was called Parim, and the AOC faction was here. And I think Lions of Israel, mm -hmm. Priest Daniela and Hashar, and some other brothers. And it was dedicated to the sisters. Now you guys celebrated this also, yes? Uh, amen. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. And basically, the 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 the, the, the feast of Parim, we celebrate in uh, uh, remembering uh, Sister Esther. Okay. Uh, and uh, Brother Mordecai. Mm. Uh, when we were in the captivity of the Persians, um, the Most High put the spirit on Mordecai to actually um, send Sister Esther as a potential wife mm. to the king of Persia. Uh, the king of Persia fell in love with her, and eventually, out of that relationship um, and that marriage, um, she was able to, uh, uh, to uh, uh, convince the king to allow us to come back uh, to and, and build the temple, and not only that, we also had a foe uh, or an enemy, uh, an Edomite by the name of Haman, mm. during that time, who went up the ranks in that kingdom, and he was always looking to destroy us. And he actually set up uh, the manipulated circumstances that uh, he was planning to kill all of us and and, uh, and and wipe us out. But then eventually, his family got wiped out. When you hear the, the story, so that celebration is a memorial of that event. Wow. And we celebrate the sisters. I'm sorry, but we celebrate the you know the sisters who who stood you know stood strong mm -hmm. and 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 and, and uh, you know stood in in in, in great odds and uh, still sacrificed in, uh, their sisters. I mean for uh, their nation. And there was many sisters that did that, like uh, Judith, 
you know, the book and in, in, in the Apocrypha. So there's many sisters that, that uh, many stories that you could you could scrapulate out the Bible uh, to honor the sisters. But I, I, I was just gonna say, good. I was just gonna say uh, to the eldest point that you know that that goes to show that there's a clear connection with our with our sisters in the Bible. A lot of people think that it's just a a patriarchal thing and that we only deal with the men, right. but the women play a huge role in the Bible. And you know, there's the, the those myths about us. You know, being, uh, you know, the, the, the positions being unequal is totally untrue. You know, everybody has their set purpose and position, and the most high deals with order. So, you know, men and women are equal, and, and you know, that that's just one instance where we pay homage to our sisters, and, you know, you could clearly see that in the scriptures. So I yeah. just wanted to say. Yeah, I wanted to cover that because, you know, I'm on the outside looking in, and the perception is that there are, like, no Hebrew women. But I know on social network, they're one, they're one of the most supportive group of people, the Hebrews in general, but especially the women, they share my content. But is there any particular reason why we don't see them in the forefront as much? Well, <clears throat> I think well, it's, it's, it's for several complicated, complicated reasons. Mm -hmm. You know, when we wake up as a Hebrew community, mm -hmm. uh, you know, most Hebrew Israelites are either African Americans or Latino Americans mm. way longer than they've been Hebrews, mm. right? And then when they wake up and, and, and picking up the, the Torah and the teachings, and, and the teaching, it mm. teaches that the man is the head of the household. Okay. Okay. And this goes back into, in the Old Testament, that uh, when uh, Adam and Eve fell, uh, because Eve uh, did what she did in regards to taking the fruit or, or, you know, maybe people say it's a fruit, or, or some people say it's a, a, you know, knowledge or philosophy, and taught that to her husband. Mm -hmm. The agreement was that now the husband will rule over her. He will be the head of her, mm -hmm. and things of that nature. And this was also um, reiterated in the New Testament that, you know, let the woman uh, uh, be, subject. be subject to her husband. Mm -hmm. Now, because of that, and because we have not grown up with that tradition, and usually in most African Latino communities, in the household, that role is changed. Uh, I have a police officer who's a friend of mine. He tells me that they have a guidebook when it comes to uh, domestic situation, when it comes to domestic uh, a call, mm -hmm. always go to the patriarch of the home. And they go, different races and different cultures have different patriarchs. Mm -hmm. And they say within the African community, always look for the woman. It's either a grandmother or a mother who is the patriarch oh, of the family. that's the protocol. That's, that's it's actually a protocol within a guidebook, within right. a police uh, 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 institution. Now, the reason why it is, because we know because of slavery, the, ma the black man has mm -hmm. been damaged, he has been, you know, emasculated, emasculated mm -hmm. and things of that nature. Women have to take, that, take on that role. Right. Even when you get public assistance, you're not allowed to have a man. Mm -hmm. And, and, and you know uh, that started like in the 70s and 60s. Mm -hmm. You're not allowed to have a man in the homes, or you they'll cut off your your, your benefits. Right. So this society has systematically uh, set up the standard of putting the woman on top and the man on the bottom. Mm -hmm. So when we as Hebrews we learn now we have to readjust our thinking. It takes some time right. to adjust that. So sometimes men don't know how to be in a position, and then women don't have to be in a position. So when the the brothers that were out there street preaching, mm -hmm. who came out of the Abba Bibbins lineage and Masha, Yaquab, the Seven, and eventually, you know, the, IS, the, the original ISUPK, right. uh, they were the best way to describe them a very, what you call, straight militant kind of uh, organization. And I value that, and I'm I'm glad that I experienced that experience because you know it, it, it really, as being a young man, it really took me and, and, and stripped me, set me straight. Mm. But in regards, because that relationship has is, is been shipped, we don't know how to navigate through that. Mm. So sometimes we may be a little harsh on on the women, on the fear that they still want to maybe they want to come back to that leadership role. Now, sometimes it's a man's fault, and sometimes other is the women's fault in regards that sometimes women don't know how to lose or let go of that control. Mm. So that's there is just blame on both sides, and both sex have to sit down those that want to embrace the Hebrew culture and really have that type of discussion and how to not feel threatened with one another. And sometimes, and now in regards to go back to your to your question, uh, dealing with street preaching and dealing with with with. Uh, teaching the gospel and being at forefront, and the scripture says that my, uh, my, uh, my sheeps are, I mean, he deals with men, my mm -hmm. sheeps are men. 
the, the, my flocks are men, except the, uh, the water brother. So, there's certain things that's going to be for men, and there's other things going to be, you know, uh, for the women. Right. Uh, so, uh, it's not that they, they are not there, they're there, they, they take a more supportive role, but <clears throat> we, like in the GOCC, we, we, we're trying to do something, things different. Like now, with the street preacher, what we're doing is, we tell them, okay, let's go out with the brothers, and maybe the sisters could be in a table on the side, giving some flyers for sisters to see, oh, sisters do this too. So we're changing uh, with the times and trying to show that this is a family uh, situation. We have wives, we have kids, we have, you know, we normal people. We're not just, you know, uh, a court, as, as most people would, would think we are. Right, right, right. Yeah. Is there any benefit to the men taking the lead role and the woman taking the supporter role, or at least in that in regards to just social, the social? Well, you know, within, um, because we see the dysfunction out here on the, on yeah, the, on the street. Yeah, I mean, so. within, within we, we, you know, we, we took the stand that the, the words of God right. is, 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 is supreme. Right. So, um, shalom, brother, how we doing? So, what some people may philosophize and say, maybe it's best to be 50 50, or right. maybe it's best to be, you know, the women to lead and things of that nature. Some people deal with the concept of my heart or, or and things of that nature. And that's all good, but we, we believe that, that this, the, the, the Hebrew uh, point of view is superior. That, and that's our culture of our mm -hmm. forefathers. Right. Now the benefit, I believe it, it, it's great for benefit. Um, I think by, by, by nature, most people would say that, or most women will be comfortable men uh, taking the lead role. Mm -hmm. The number one complaint that, that I receive because I do many family counseling in my church, mm -hmm. you know, couple counseling, things of that nature, premarital counseling, things of that nature, uh, is the fear of abuse, mm -hmm. meaning taking abuse of that leadership role. Mm -hmm. You know, so it is an issue that women have to begin to start trusting men mm -hmm. and understand that the men are not going to abuse that, that position. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so it is, it's, it's an issue of trust mm -hmm. and understanding uh, they need to be one flesh. Okay. Okay. Beautiful. Beautiful. So, so it, it's, it's great benefit. If it's done right, it, it's, 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 it will be powerful. And every strong nation has a strong family value. Mm. You know, if, if you have not good family structure in that nation, you're not going to have a strong nation. Right, right, right. Now, I yeah. see. You. I see my brother on the side going through the going through the uh, Bible. Care to tell us what type of Bible that is, and also what are you looking for? Maybe. Okay. All right. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, this is the King James 1611 version of the Bible. Okay. Um, this is the actual. Uh, it's a commemorative edition, so it's, it's it's as close to form as the 1611 was when it first came out. And the scripture I was just looking for is in First uh, Corinthians uh, chapter 11, uh, speaking to the to the position of men and women but I, I was just yeah I don't know if you uh, yeah it, 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 you could go that you know what it will be uh Ephesians uh 5 and 21 okay I think that uh, I like that scripture because it, it, it breaks it down the position of the man and the position of the woman and it kind of all brings it in all at, 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 at the end mm -hmm. now, now now some would say that's so old it's not right for the times mm -hmm. right like like you just said the militant aspect maybe was great for the time well you didn't yeah. say that but i, I right, right. registered like that and now it might be time to shift things a little bit in, yeah, well, in, in what, the presentation what what i look at our people is that we are like a child that don't like our father mm. because he's old-fashioned mm. and we are rebellious and then we're going out to the world right. we're trying everything under the tree and at the end we're going to realize that this old grumpy man <laughs> that always was strict, didn't want us to, you know, have fun, right. was eventually right. Mm. So sometimes what is good for you is not fun. Mm. What is good for you it takes discipline to get used to. Right. You know, so I think the scripture is that big pill that you have to take that right. you don't want to swallow. So uh, eventually we're going to realize that these principles were for a reason, it was for our own good. Okay. We, we, in, in hindsight, it may seem sexist, it may mm. seem outdated, mm. but eventually we're gonna realize that the outcome right. of not following these principles is what you see before you, mm. which is not good. No. So, yeah. so, so let, let, let's break that real quick. Can yeah, I add on to that real yeah. quick before we get in? Uh, also, if you look at the powers that be that control the civilization and the society that we live under, 
they've systematically set it up in a fashion to make you look at these things as outdated and old fashioned yeah. because it's with the media you, you, you get an onslaught of just uh, negativity and things that go against the world. So right. you'll actually see a system where they promote uh, you know, this whole chaotic mess that you see on these streets. Right. Where it, someone that is in tune with the trend and what's modern and like you said, what's going on right now, mm. would, would look at this as archaic. But really, yeah. if we never got away from this, you know, you, we, we, we'd be in good condition because you see what they did with slavery. The first thing they did was took us from these principles. Mm. And, and, so, and, yeah, and to add to that, brother, it's also, also take away the position of the man in the household. Right. You know, when you look even to these sitcoms and these, right. you know, these these movies, the, the father's always an idiot. Right. He's you know, dumb. He's, he's dumb. It's always the mother who's the smartest person. Right. Mm. The kids are cool and hip, and the guy, the, you know, he's, he's incompetent. Right. Right. You know, it, it, these things are not by the accident. Right. You know, so uh, it's a social programming. Social programming. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, to, so when you read stuff like this, let's read that real quick. Yeah. All right. This is the book of Ephesians, chapter five, verse twenty. I'll start at twenty. Okay giving thanks always for all things unto the most high uh -huh. and the father in the name of our lord yeshua christ come on submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of the most high come on wives submit yourselves unto your own husbands uh -huh. as unto the most high come on for the husband is the head of the wife uh -huh. even as christ is the head of the church come on so he's giving an example now. He's gonna because I like this because he he goes all the way through. He brings he said submit to your your husband as 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 uh, the church is submitted into Christ. Read, and he is the savior of the body. Come on. Therefore, so in the same way Christ is the savior of the church, the man's supposed to be the savior of his family to protect his family. So he's giving scenario how how the relationship supposed to be. Right. Read. Therefore. As the church is subject unto Christ, uh -huh. so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Uh -huh. Husbands, love your wives. Love your wife, even as Christ also loved the church. Now he has to give an now he has to give an example how what we supposed to do. We now Christ, his job is to guide the church. Sometimes he got angry with his disciples, but it was for their own good. Sometimes he had to discipline his disciples, but it was for their own good. Mm. And he died for his disciples. Mm -hmm. Okay, read. And gave himself for it. Come on. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water uh -huh. by the word. Come on. That he might pres uh, present it to himself a glorious church, uh -huh. not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing. So the family's supposed to be tight. I mean, the kids supposed to be in order. It's supposed you're supposed to go walk, walk in that home and be like, "Wow, this is impressive." You know, everybody's in order. Everybody is happy and cheerful. The kids are happy. The husband are happy. You, you know, the, the wife and, and the husband uh, are kissing each other and embracing each other. They can't get their hands off each other because they're so much in love with one another. You're supposed to see that. It's supposed to be spotless when you walk in, right? But we, we don't see that, right? So he's giving you an example how the, mar how the family is supposed to be, right? Read. But that it should be holy and without blemish. Come on. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. As their own body. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. Come on. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, uh -huh. but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord the church. Uh -huh. For we are members of his body, Come on. of his flesh, uh -huh. and of his bones. Come on. For this cause shall, shall a man leave his father and mother, uh -huh. and shall be joined unto his wife, uh -huh. and they shall too be one flesh. Come on. This is a great mystery. But I speak concerning Christ and the church. Uh -huh. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself. Uh -huh. And the wife see that she reverence her husband. And see she respects her husband. So that's the, 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 stru the structure. So the man has a lane and the sister has a lane. So that's the structure of, of, of the family. The man has a lane and the sister has a lane. So, and it's going to be difficult. Nothing that is... That is uh, worth working is is easy, you know, because the sister's gonna be out of her comfort zone and the man is gonna be out of his comfort zone. But once they still understanding that position, and, and and the man, like for instance, you know, there's certain things I I, I present in my home, or I say we're gonna go this route that are a mistake, and I learn from the mistakes and I I do things different. 
but I don't feel threatened by my wife if mm. I do those mistakes. Sometimes when we in a separate relationship, when men sometimes just, 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 just you know, form to a hole, they don't want to even lead because they're too afraid to lead to do mistakes because not only just, just they've never been in that position, but when they are going to, uh, when they do those mistakes, which they are, okay, they're going to get chastised but by their mom, aka their wife. You know, in most African American Latino uh, uh, relationship, they have a mother and, and, and son relationship. The the wife plays the mother, and the and the husband plays the son, and, and that that structure has to change, and and that happened by design. Mm -hmm. So so it, it, it is we dealing with 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 real difficult times, and we need to do the dif difficult things to change those things, uncomfortable things to change those things. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, and just even when you uh, listen to our sisters in the community on a very basic level, you oftentimes hear them complaining about, oh, uh, you know, men need to stand up, I'm tired of them, you know, they don't got a job, they're not doing what they got to do, this and that. So they're looking for, you know, that, that, that head and that figure to really kind of uphold the discipline within the household, you know, because that's not a natural woman's disposition, that's not her natural principle. You know, her principle is to be nur nurturing and caring and loving. She shouldn't have to come down and be, you know, like this. That's that's the father's, that's the Godhead position. So, mm -hmm. you know, everything is, is balanced and in order. So, right. Beautiful. Now, I did see you pull out the King James Version of the Bible. Right. And I don't, I don't like to assume that my audience are familiar with the Hebrew Israelites or the GOCC faction. Mm -hmm. right. Now, can you explain what are the differences or the subtle nuances that separates or at least it's not the same as the Christian culture, okay. because I'm sure people will look at this and say, these brothers, are, are they Christians? Or are they, are they, I know they're not Jews because of the Bible, but what are the subtle differences and why? Maybe you guys came from that uh, particular paradigm and, and left there. Mm -hmm. uh, speak on it. Well, let me just touch on that. Uh, in regards of the GOCC, our standing and our doctrine, you know, we believe that the, 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 the so-called African-American Latino man and woman and child and Native American along with the indigenous people of North Central America along with the uh, Hawaiians and also the Aborigines of Australia are the true lost tribe of the house of Israel mm. and we have to come back and to the lost statue commandment of the Most High and accept Christ as our Lord and Savior. Mm. So we New Testament Hebrew. So we, we accept the O and the New. Um, we focus only and we t our target is our Hebrew Israelites, okay? Uh, but we don't, uh, if, if Gentiles want to come and learn from us, we will not, we, we won't deprive them because also Gentiles in the kingdom, they're gonna keep these laws. So for them to receive blessings in the, gen, in, in the kingdom, receive the blessings that belong to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, okay? Uh, they have to gravitate to the, to the house of Israel. Mm. So uh, we accept Gentiles, um, it, it, those that want to learn. We don't have many Gentiles in our congregation. Um, sometimes Gentiles uh, cannot uh, agree with the, 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 the relationship in regards of uh, us leading and their following kind of uh, relationship. But those that ha have been with us and, and been that pos and, and, and accept those, that, those positions, you know, uh, they've been with us and, and it's been a good relationship. So that's the doctrine of basically a GOCC. Uh, a little different from GOCC that you may see in the other Hebrew Israelites, we, are in, we, we embrace other biblical writings outside of the 24 Old Testament books and the, uh, the New Testament and also the Apocrypha. Most Hebrew Israelites, especially from the, the, the branch that I came from, um, except the Old Testament, the Apocrypha, and the New Testament. Mm. We also embrace the, the Book of Enoch, the Book of Jubilee, and the Book of Jasher. The Book of Jasher, we don't view it as divine, we view it as a history book. Mm. It was a collective of histories that were put together by different, different scholars or different uh, men of the, at the time and to collaborate and things of that nature. So sometimes it, that, that book sometimes does not always agree or the other uh, books which we feel is divine, which is the Book of Jubilee and Enoch and the Scriptures, uh, but it is a good source uh, to get uh, information from a historical perspective. Uh, so we, that's a little different from, from our camp that you see in other camps. Also, um, we also go by a name that most people are not familiar with, which is Ahaya. Most, uh, there's something also different that uh, uh, you made, uh, we're different from other camps and things, other Israelite groups. 
uh, the name that we pray to. Uh, most Hebrew Israelites, you will see the word Yah, or you hear the word Yah, or uh, Yahweh, mm. okay, or Yahweh, mm. uh, and things of that nature. We go by the name of Ahaya. Mm. Uh, Ahaya, um, if you hear most Hebrew Israelite explanation, because the word Ahaya, or the name Ahaya, is found in Exodus chapter 3, verse 14 and 15. When Moses asked the Most High his name, he said, you tell the children of Israel, I am has sent me, or Ahaya has sent me. Mm. Now, the, the argument is that Yahweh or Yahweh is the second person. So, what most, when you hear Moses' explanation that uh, Hebrews would, would, would give you, because this is what I was teaching for, for many years, is that Ahaya is first person, mm. and Yahweh or Yahweh is third person meaning he is, okay, and I am his first person. So when Moses called the Most High's name, he said he is, which is Ahaya, oh, I'm sorry, uh, Salakim, uh, Yahweh or Yahweh. Through our research, we saw that that name was inserted much later, okay, and it was not part of the original name that mm. was originally given, which was Ahaya. Um, so that's, that's a little different in regards to doctrine, and um, our calendar is a little different. You know, we mentioned that before. So our feast days land a little different from most of the Hebrew. Um, other than that, you know, we're, we're, we're pretty much traditional Hebrews in every sense of the word. Uh, if, if I could address, you know, yeah, the Christian okay. versus the. Well, you you asked the question about the different Bibles. The, the, you said, you know, is it different? Yeah. When I pulled out the King James, you were asking. I was asking if if, if there's any subtle nuances or differences between the Christian paradigm and the Hebrew Israelite well, paradigm. Well, yeah. just, just to address the, the, the King James situation, yeah. one of the reasons why I deal with, with this with this particular book is because uh, the initial King James Version Bible that came out had the Apocrypha within it. Mm. And, and around the year 1880, it started to be, to be removed from the Bible. So now it's actually a separate text uh, aside from the Bible. Mm. Um, the, another reason why we deal with the, with the King James Version of the Bible, and it's not the only version of the Bible that we deal with, but no. it has the New Testament, the Apocrypha, and the Old Testament, and, and it's a very solid translation. It's a very sound translation when mm. you actually look into the process of which it was done. Plus, it's connected to the Strong's Concordance, mm. you know, directly, word for word. So you can actually go back and check the original Hebrew, the original Greek words associated with each word and verse in the Bible. Um, a lot of the New Age books, They've, it's actually been an agenda to remove certain key scriptures from there. Uh, I think one of the most popular ones is Matthew 18 and 11. So if you're dealing with a new international Bible or a new living translation or a new American Bible and so on and so forth, most of them have that scripture removed. And when you go to that, to that verse, it tells you that the Son of Man came to save that which is lost. So we know that it's Christ coming to get the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Mm, right. and, and the same publishers that produce a lot of these New Age Bibles actually also produce the Satanic Bible. Mm. So... You know, there's, there's really a, 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 a contradiction and, uh, you know, w with that whole agenda, it's a new age agenda to really dumb down the people. Um, now, we deal with the Septuagint, we deal with the Tanakh, we read the Tanakh, we read the Septuagint as well, and other older versions of the Bible, but this has the New Testament in it. So, you can go and refer to those books for the law, but there's no, the, the accounts of Christ and the epistles are not, are not a part of those, uh, uh, those, that corpus of work. So the King James is really a solid translation, uh, contrary to popular belief. Mm. And, and also, you know, uh, like the brother was saying, let, let me just go back into, you know, the different versions, you know, because many people say there's so many different versions. There's actually only, in regards of the New Testament, only two versions. Only two versions? Yeah, meaning you have the, uh, Antioch version, okay, uh, and you have the uh, Alexandrian version, and basically there was a debate within which two versions are the most credible, mm. and they are per word the same. Um, the Alexandrian version was found in Egypt is 95%, um, oh, I'm sorry, 5% shorter in regards of the certain scriptures that are not there. Mm. The one in Antioch, which that's where the Christians, that community began to uh, 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 flourish, right. uh, that version is called the Antioch version, okay? All the Bible are translated out of those two versions only. Mm. So there was not, there were different segments of, uh, they were found, they found 
a little book of the book of Daniel. I think the, the only other is the book of Ma the, the Matthews. They found that uh, intact in the Hebrew, in the Masoretic. They found, I mean, in the, 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 the Aramaic language. Mm -hmm. uh, but all the other gospel was written in, in Greek. So they t the, the, the King James took it out, out of the, uh, the Antioch version not the Alexandria version. And it's controversial about that, and I'm gonna do a, a PowerPoint on that to kind of show you the history. Now, the, the uh, NIV Bible, which is usually is becoming the most popular, is translated out of the Alexandria's version. Mm. Okay, that's why there's certain parts missing. And both sides blame each other for the missing parts, meaning the Alexandrians say, you add it to fit your doctrine, mm. and then the the Antioch will say that you took away to fit your doctrine. So, but uh, that's those are the two versions. In regards to the New Testament, on the Old Testament, you only have really three popular ones. You have the Masoretic, which are uh, which are the twenty-four books that the King James was translated from. You have the, the, the Pentateuch, which are the five books of Moses, and also the book of Psalms is in there. Mm. Uh, that's another sect. And you also have the Septuagint, which is the uh, a Greek Bible that was translated directly from the Hebrew. There's about the oldest fragments that have been found is about 2,300 years, give or take. Uh, so those are the three major, and last but not least, the, the Dead Sea Scrolls. Mm. Okay, the Dead Sea Scrolls were found and discovered around 1945, and it was a process of time, you know. Um, and prior to that, the, 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 the first three, the Masoretic, the, the, the Pentateuch, and the, uh, the Septuagint were the only three major ones. The Masoretic only goes a thousand years. The Masoretic, I mean, the Masoretic only goes a thousand years. The Pentateuch goes a little older than that, and the Septuagint was about 2,000, give or take, until the, the Dead Sea Scrolls, which many people will say it goes about two to three hundred years before Christ. Mm -hmm. So that's the oldest compiled, and all the books of the Bible are found there, except one, the book of Esther, and also you found in there the book of Enoch, or fragment of the book of Enoch, and fragment of the book of Jubilee as well. Okay, Adam and also, and, and, the, and fragment of uh, uh, Adam and Eve, another book that we also accept. Okay, so, um, and the great thing about these, these different records that have been found, is that they all say the same thing. Mm. It's very minor, minute, like in one place you'll see Sabbath, in another place you see rest. It's the same word, right. you know, a different, you know, a different variation. It, it's, it's, but they're all saying the same thing. That's why the Hebrew records are one of the most preserved and reliable record in the history of the world. Right. Okay, uh, because they have found fragments with the different languages in different parts of the world uh, and they all had up. Right. So clearly, there is some. There was some level of preserving, and because and I uh, 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 and I think the reason why that is, is because within the Hebrew culture, we were not allowed to draw ourselves. Mm. We were not allowed to carve our images of God, of our gods, or and things of that nature. So the only thing that was preserved to us, and we were the only thing we was allowed to do, is to carve and write these records. Mm. So. If, Within the culture, it, it, it developed a culture in the same way as the Egyptian master uh, building mm -hmm. pyramids. We master preserving these records. Mm -hmm. So you have a scribe that my job was to memorize the chronology of the Hebrews. His job was to memorize the, 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 the Genesis. Right. His job was to memorize Exodus and so forth so on. So this culture uh, which uh, has been proven to preserve these records. That's why it's one of the, it's one of the more reliable records in my, in my estimation in the history of the world. Mm -hmm. and, and that's also uh, to, to point out that a lot of people think that that's a, a Muslim tradition to memorize an entire you know, chapter or book, but that actually is a Hebrew custom where we would actually memorize an entire book in song form and we would reiterate it. So you would have, like the elder said, yeah. you would have somebody that would know the entire book of Genesis, another brother know the entire book of Exodus come together and we would write these things out. So. Yeah. And because we were always nomadic, we always had, right. was on the move, so we needed, uh, and that's why we, we wrote it in scrolls, 
and we didn't have time to write it in stones because stones are too heavy mm. to be carrying around. Okay. So it was part of our culture to have it in these scrolls and walk around with us. Same same yeah. reason why we buried our people and then took the bones and carried them with us. Right. We had the box so that it was e easily, you know, uh, so we could be mobile with it. Exactly. So. And now you bring up the Egyptians and the, uh, or the Kemites. We just had a debate not too long ago with uh, Brother Polite and the Amin Ra squad. Mm -hmm. um, I know that was like your first uh, big debate. How was it? <coughs> How was the experience? High energy, um, crowded room, uh, a lot of energy. It was fun. I mean, I got I had fun. It was frustrating in certain points, but it, it, it was it was fun. You know, I think really, um, I wasn't concerned about the bait winning or losing. I'm gonna tell you why, because. And the Bible makes a claim, mm. right? The Bible is making a claim that this happened, right? Mm. Then you have secular history, you have science, and you have, you know, experts analyzing what happened. We haven't figured out. We don't know what happened. Mm. We have an idea. Mm. We have a segment. We have a, you know, a, 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 a small understanding of what happened. But we don't know for sure what happened. So because science has not able to produce a actual mathematical, factual uh, re uh, record of what exactly happened, undisputed, you could never disprove the Bible. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? Like for instance, um, like Polite and I was having a, a conversation about how old the earth is. And you could have a, you know, a scientist say it was three billion years old. It's another scientist would say it's three, uh, three you know, uh, trillion years old, what have you. When you start looking at where they're deriving these, these uh, numbers from, it's from, from a theoretical perspective. They couldn't ever prove it. Right? Mm. So that's the strength of the Bible, that you cannot disprove it. Mm. You could bring a theory, and if you're good enough, or you deal with a brother who's not learned, you could win that debate. But it's not because the Bible has been disproven. It's right. because that brother didn't have enough arsenal, the scholarship to defend the Bible. So I wasn't worried about that because there's always an explanation for everything when it comes to these things. And there's a rebuttal for everything. Mm. There's a rebuttal for everything. So I wasn't concerned about that. What I, was, what, what I threw myself in the, in the arena is for several reasons. Within the African-American community, there's been things that have been said by certain individuals that has not been proven or they have not produced any evidence. Like for instance, open claims. Open claims. Um, Egypt has a civilization of a thirty thousand years. Right. I heard that. That hasn't been proven. Mm. Um, Egypt is the oldest, the oldest civilization. Mm. We don't know that yet. Right. There's claims that uh, there's a possibility that uh, the Mayans. It, it, there's evidence right. to, to suggest that. Right. We don't know. We think. And I think what has happened is is that our brothers who were you know, the, the Dr. Ben, the Dr. You know, Quincy, and these brothers that were the pioneers, and we love them, and we're glad they were there because they were the counterpart to the European uh, counterpart, mm -hmm. European history. Because mm -hmm. if you leave it up to the Europeans, they're going to erase the blackness mm -hmm. of everything, right? Mm -hmm. We know that. So we, 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 we appreciate their being there, being kind of like the gatekeepers. But what happened, it became a feel good. Uh, right. And they made certain statements that they got a standing ovation. They got, they got uh, it, people, you know, uh, rejurgated as being fact, but it was never factual. Um, so, and, and another thing is that the Bible, you know, the, the writings of the Bible is in, is in the walls of Kemet and it's things crazy. of that nature. You can find the story of Jesus uh, in, in, in the Bible, you know, the story of Christ. And when you start looking at the evidence, it's not there. Mm. So where is this came from? So my thing is, is that this is, this is beyond theology. This is actually, we should not be teaching our children this incorrect information. Mm. Or at least give the children the evidence, but they could decide, say, okay, that is plagiarism. Oh, no, 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 dad, that's not plagiarism. So that's been the, that my, my biggest issue is that when the committed community, they just say certain things, they cannot back up. And so we, you know, this, we wanted to kind of get our, 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 our leg in for two reasons. So of course to promote our church, because, you know, I figure all promotion is good promotion. Mm -hmm. You know, we were kind of under the radar for a long time. Right. So we wanted to kind of, you know, be out there and things of that nature. Um, myself and Brother Nassi, we were talking 
in regards of unification from the SETI uh, debate yeah. behind the scene. So this was something that it was been behind the scene for a long time. Um, uh, as a matter of fact, in that debate, you could see me asking that same question. Say, like, brother, do you do you believe in working with other Hebrews? And mm. he said, yeah. And from that, we exchanged number. We began to build, and this is kind of the process of that. So, it, it so it wasn't for the debate because you know if you you're a comedic and you're going to defend comedic, that you you you're, you're convinced of that, and that's okay. And we're not here to be stuck on that. Right. I'm pretty much, you know, I'm beyond that right now. I'm looking towards the future. Right. And, and, and uh, but, you know, one thing that us Hebrews, we make sure, and even now more than ever, to show and prove what we're saying. And at least give the audience, this is the evidence that we have. You can look at it. This is our conclusion of these evidence. And this is the reason why we believe we're the Hebrews. Mm. And you can accept it or not. And I think the same philosophy should be within the comedic situation. So if you make a statement like, Egypt is 30,000 years old, okay, present the evidence. This is the reason why I believe it's 30,000 years mm -hmm. old. You can, you can decide or not. And, and I think once we start doing that and we start, you know, it's like sometimes our brothers, they just want us to be, they want to become a legend and want people just to hear them. And the evidence is behind this curtain, but mm -hmm. they don't want to move the curtain. Right. Let the kids see the evidence. You know, and let them decide. And I think a lot of that, to be honest with you, it has become an industry. Mm. You know, these 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 uh, interviews, these uh, PowerPoints, and these uh, lectures. So and so is coming to speak, and so and so, and they become the vanguard of what you call black cultures. Mm. We don't want to do that no more. Even from the Hebrews, mm. you know, I, I came from that too. I came from coming from a, a, a Hebrew culture that the elders never told you your, their sources. Mm -hmm. Never told you their sources. They'll give you a little bit. When well, you got that book, elder, don't worry about it, brother. <laughs> you know, those days are over because the internet, now yeah. we got those, you know, we got, we got, because information is power. Yes, yeah, information age. And, and, and now when you have the, you have the power of the information, right. you can control the masses. Okay, right? Mm -hmm. But now, since you, we're in the information age, that power is, no, is getting weaker and weaker. Right. So now we need to now change something different now. That's why what we're doing with the summit is now we're sharing information mm. to get away, to knock down these walls that, okay, we got all the information. So we, you understand why we believe the book of Enoch versus the you know, not, right. other books. Uh, now we know why you don't believe the book of Enoch. Right. We're all sharing information. Once we have that out the way, what's next? Right. It's building. We're not, we're not controlling the masses by right. information because here's the information. And now what is driving us forward is the idea. Ideas are bulletproof and nothing can stop an idea. Once this idea is going forward, nothing, it's, a, it's a force of nature. Right, right. You know, so it, it's, it's, it's the intellectual Hebrew is going to win the day. And, we, and, and we're shifting to the time, but we're keeping those principles because those principles are gonna, is, is our constitution. It's what's going to keep us together. Is that glue? Right, right. And just to add on as well, um, you know, none of the Hebrews come in a vain name. You know, we're, we're, we're the ones out there, you know, my elder and Hashar and, you know, Daniel Allah, they, those are the brothers that are out there that you see on the forefront. But none of them or none of us come in, in our own name. We come in the name of Christ and we come in the name of the Most High. So it, it's never a vain thing like, oh, I'm brother such and such, you know, and that's why no matter what is said, you're not going to throw us off our rock because the scriptures still stand for themselves. Mm. So, and special shout out to all, all of the Hebrew camps. You know, yeah. Yeah. To oh, oh, and New Testament, Quimson, yeah. Nevada, Nassi, Zion Lex, Divine Prospect, uh, right. all, all the brothers, all, all, all the elders that paid away, uh, uh, Masha, Yaiqua, uh, 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 Ishaya, uh, 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 you know, uh, Shah, Kazakh, uh, Malak, all, all the elders that that that, that paid the way for us, you know, Abba Bibbins, right. Abba Matthews, you know, people said that we don't give them enough credit, right. you know, we give them credit now. For, they, for everybody. You know, all those brothers that paid the way, absolutely. We, we are their children, we are their offspring, and right. we're working together. All right, so, me, I love the debates. I think I actually got drawn into the said conscious community, watching a couple of debates. I, I wanted to come out to the events. I know the youth love it. Um, now that you guys had it, the differences are all over the place. Is there any area or anything that you or that you can say that the Hebrews and the Kemites can actually come to agree on or, or is that jumping the gun? 
Um, there's many things we could agree, agree and on. Possibly build, of course. Yeah. Um, you know, we, 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 we could definitely agree on the only, like, I would... How about like one point? Like if it was one thing that you say, you know what, you guys do this, we do this, we can maybe at least build on that one like point. Like for instance, there's not enough talk about Mahat in, in, the, in the Hebrew, I mean in the Kemet community. Mm -hmm. The Kemet community, you know, when, I, when, I, when me studying Mahat in, in this little time, you know, there's a lot of good principles mm -hmm. that like, for instance, we have to remember the Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. you know, we have to remember the Torah. We have to, you know, we have either things within, within the, the the, our schools to even teach our kids they have to memorize you know the, the, the commandments I'm, I'm questioning if these brothers even know the 42 confessions do they do I have never seen a PowerPoint on breaking down each confession because mm. science behind in the science yeah. behind it mm. there's a lot of point there's a lot of stuff that we agree on mm. in, 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 in these things so I think you know within the the comedic community if, if they could you stay away from we were great, we were great, we were great. Mm. Man pleasing and man worshiping and actually look at the, the culture. We could, get a, we could throw away the bones and stuff we would disagree. And I would give you that Egypt was invaded and different cultures came with that invasion. I would give you that. Mm -hmm. you know, but if you stay with my aunt and stay with those principles and things of that nature, then we could start building. Because right now, before we, we, we build, the Kemetic community has to stand on certain principles. They had certain constitution. We don't know if you, you know, and things of that nature. So, if I'm throwing the white flag. Let, okay, let's surrender. Let's, you know, let's, let's throw the peace. You claim you 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 will never sit. You will never. Uh, you will say you'll take away that we we took stuff from you guys or or, or uh, we robbed from your culture, and we'll stop saying that Egypt was you know immoral or what have you. Okay, we'll <laughs> choose right. <laughs> choose we'll, right now. But Egypt has to, the, the Kemites have to go into a, 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 a look into the stuff, look, look at the positive stuff that we agree like my aunt, mm. and build a, a government out of that. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Because one of the things that, that uh, we understand, and this is something profound that you bring up with that book, what's that brother's name, that, that, that you can't build a, a culture in blackness? Oh yeah, that H.R. Uh, Brown, the revolution. H.R. Brown, right. the brother says that it has to be on, it has to it's be on blackness. blackness or your color. You're black, I'm right. black. Okay, let's come together. Yeah, okay. I, agree, I agree with that. So we have to, we need, we need a constitution mm -hmm. that we stand for. We need, we need a, a, a value, a value system. We need, we need, we need some, and the Kemet and the Hebrews don't have to agree in every situation, but at least if, if the Kemites could come out with a constitution or a principle that it could grab, it, it would be able to gravitate, or the people could gravitate to. Not all of them, because mm -hmm. I realized that the Hebrew society or the Hebrew culture itself, itself it only attracts a certain kind of individual. Mm -hmm. And the Kemites would attract another type of individual. Mm -hmm. You understand? Right. So it's. Uh, uh, freedom of religion, there's some uh, truth to that. Mm -hmm. You know, when you have choices, right? right? But, right, my, my the, the, the issue with, 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 with Kemai is that I don't know what is their religion. I don't know what they stand for. You, you understand what I'm saying? Right, right. And it, it, it's almost man worshiping rather than a, a, a governmental structure. And I think uh, doing these debates, I think we are inspiring them and they're inspiring us mm. you know so ultimately you know we we, we will see eye to eye in certain things right now we, we're, we're we're not right you know um and right now i'm more focusing on the Build, hebrews yeah, building with the hebrews because we haven't seen eye to eye many things so right. we have to you, you know once we do that then we could go outside our community and start building with yeah our that's a great plan and, yeah. and there's certain things that the committed community and others are just going to have to put down as far as like the elder mentioned earlier making open claims you know mm -hmm. like the bible's plagiarized or king james was a homosexual right. these are things that we've proven are not the case so at a certain point you gotta you gotta put certain things aside and if you have a difference you know uh or you're at odds with the bible let it be for the scripture's sake not for you know vain rhetoric and things of that nature you know it has right. to be something substantial right. you know and if you disagree with something personally that's another issue because we we've all had lifestyles prior to coming into this bible and we've sacrificed those lifestyles to fall 
in accordance with the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High. So, if 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 you're of a certain perspective and you're saying, well, I don't agree with that, it's a lot of stuff that you might not agree with coming into the scriptures. But it doesn't doesn't mean that it's wrong, or doesn't mean that it's not true. Absolutely not. It's just you have to you have to you know shift your 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 mo, your modus operandi, and, and, and your daily walk, and and accept you know purity and truth and move with that. Mm. So, you know, because there's certain things, I mean, you know, there's, there's like, just like the principles of my yacht, there's, there's certain principles and things within this book that you cannot deny, you know, that are, that are positive attributes that we should all uphold as a community, you know? So, you know, what's wrong with, uh, you know, uh, the dietary law, for example, you know? The dietary law is something that our community heavily needs right now, but the diabetes that we're on, the alcoholism, and all of the things that we're afflicted with, why wouldn't one want to accept the dietary law to help curb their, their eating habits and to help curb their health and, and to live a more prosperous lifestyle? You know what I'm saying? That's just one example of some of the science in the Bible that is profound. And, and if you accept it, you know, I think the elder made a claim a while back. He said, you keep, you keep the commandments for one year, you'll see a, a, a huge increase in your life. You know, and you'll see more discipline. You know, you'll see uh, better health. You know, you'll see that your your you know it says charity is the principal commandment. Our people don't need charity. Our people don't need love. You know, these are these are principles that you can't deny and you can't go outside of. So, you know, if you don't agree with loving your brother or you don't agree with keeping a dietary law and things of that nature, then that's you that don't agree with it. It right. doesn't mean that it's not a solid foundation to keep. Right. We we, we have to come together from the, from the perspective of you don't attack the Bible, we won't attack Kemi. Right. Mm. And 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 if someone asks you a statement, ask you a question, or, and this is what I said, you know, to brother, you know, the, the brothers, that if your plight, if your mission is to show your greatness, and your greatness is that everybody stole from you, including the Bible, mm. that's going to be your war cry, and we can't be friends. Mm. We, right. we, we're not going to stand on together. your own too. You know, you know, it, 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 you know, I don't have to go to other coaches and say, you stole this from me. Mm. My culture stays alone. You understand? We have a dietary laws. We have right. the commandments. We have the, you know, we, we have marriage laws. We have, we don't, and 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 we don't uh, say, uh, yeah, go. To, the, the Muslims took this from us. Or right. We don't, we don't focus on another culture. And, and the, the Egyptians have to look into their culture, and like I said, they're not touching on my eye. Right. There's a lot of good principles they could, they could, they could deal with that, and say this is out, and they, they could take pride. This came from my walls mm. because they were. Right. And they don't have to say that, uh, you know, we stole this from anything. This is ours. And, 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 and we will agree with them. That is yours. Mm -hmm. And things of that nature. Now, when you go in, uh, within the, the, the 40, you know, the, uh, conf uh, uh, Ma'at, confessions, um, there are certain things that the Bible are the same. But these are universal principles. Universal. Mm -hmm. You, know, you when can you, find that in Hammurabi's code. Hammurabi's code. Everything. Now, when you go into every nation, you're going to find five principles. You're going to find... Worshiping of deities, not killing, not stealing, not stealing, not committing adultery, sleeping with some, a man's wife because that was very, you know, it was a male-dominated society. Right. So clearly, that 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 would be out there, and also not lying or raising false witness in a court system, mm. because back in the days, your your witness or eight witness was very important resolving issues because there was no camera there was right no, right so that's all they had that makes sense right so you're always going to find that in every culture from japan they had those cultures from africa from hawaii they when you look at native americans they had those five principles they, those universal principles okay you don't take what's mine okay i don't sleep with your wife mm -hmm. if i ask you a question tell the truth and then this you know worship to their god whatever mm -hmm. that means sacrifice those are you know things that are universal Right. So if you're gonna find those things in my eye, they'll say, "Well, you stood up for mass." Well, you know, uh, that, that's not that hasn't been proven. I think that's that's just. And when you look at all the writings of literature, they only go back as far as only three to four thousand years. All the writings only goes back to that, and every society only goes back up to you know uh, six to seven thousand years in regards of, of time period and, and structure and things of that nature. Going forward, that. And, and even the, the hardcore evolutionaries would tell you that 6,000 years ago, for some reason, man quantum leap into knowledge. They just started building stuff in a rapid space, pace, and things of that nature. And the Bible, and our record says that's when man was created, right? Mm -hmm. 
And that's when, when man began to build. They came to, you know, the Most High gave them the breath of life, so he knew these things uh, already without having to be taught. He, he knew things of that nature. Now, that's what our record says. If your record says something different, that, that's okay, but you don't have to, you can respect our records, and then I'll respect your records. If just, your record says this, the earth is much longer, mm -hmm. you're, you're entitled to that. It doesn't have to be like you're wrong because we don't know. We believe because we're reading. And they say with the, you know, the stories of my, of the, uh, um, in, the, in, the, in the wars, that's what they say. But mm -hmm. we don't know for sure that they were right. In the same way, we don't know for sure that the Bible is right. We made a decision because we, that's what we believe in. And we, that's an open statement. Mm -hmm. we, we believe. That's what we decide to believe. Right. Because when you, now, you know, we are, like Brother Sonnet said, we, we, we're all slaves in the north, in the, in the, in the, the, the wilderness of North America. Right. We're just waking up and we're all getting information and we're gravitating to the Bible because that's what made sense to us. Right. You touched on the health. Right. Um, do you not subscribe to alcohol in the GOCC faction? Um, well, well, the scriptures say, well, I'll, I'll let the elders speak. No, no, go ahead. Okay. You're good, you're good, you're good. Well, the scripture says that, you know, you should not take strong drink, you know, but wine and things of that nature is, mm. is obviously that's that's okay. Mm. Um, but even even uh, a drink here and there, but it, nothing should become a habit. Nothing mm. should become something that you're dependent upon. Mm. You see, because we're supposed to be free from, from anything, you know, outside of the most high. We're supposed to live on that alone. So, you know, it's just. Yeah, we, we could drink yeah. in, in moderation. Um, the big thing, the reason why, you know, I like the New Testament is because the Old Testament gave you the laws, mm. but the New Testament gives you how to follow the laws, mm. you know. So, you know, those, most, he brothers that um, reject the New Testament usually deal with the, the, what you call the Talmud or the Babylonian Talmud, which is the commentary of how to follow the, you know, the laws, which... Uh, I read the Talmud, and they have a lot of good points there, and things of that nature. There's some things I disagree, and a lot of things that uh, they took, and the Europeans added a lot of stuff there, a lot of racist stuff in there, and, and things of that nature. But the Babylonian Talmud goes back into the time we were in Babylon, and what, what the, the, the legend is is that we had the laws, but we did not know how to keep the laws in a foreign land. Mm. So the Talmud, the commentaries derived from those in that time and it eventually became like standard you know uh the, the so the commentary which was inspired by men was not inspired by god uh was was um uh was considered also part of the law and then once when people became to challenge the talmud that's when the legend became said well this is the oral law it was always here it was just never written down so there's a lot of controversy about that but the new testament i like it because it is our the, our talmud by the Messiah, the Christ. So he came down, the word of God, and the mm. word became flesh and dwelt among us, mm. okay? And he told us that you're doing this wrong, you're doing that right, this is a little, you know, you gotta fix this. So now he, that's why he's the, the one that we follow. He is the way back to the Father. Right. So, in bottom line, what Christ was telling us is self-control, self meaning in the Old Testament, you had the judgments. Right, the judgment is supposed to. Have, the judgment is not the law. That's why people get confused when Christ says, "Think not, I came to change the law, nor the prophets." Right, I came not to come to change the law, but uh, to fulfill. Right, and people think, "Oh, Christ is contradicting himself because why we supposed to think? Why are we not killing? Why are we not sacrificing? Mm. Things of that nature." Right, when those people are breaking the law, because according to the law. If you committed homosexuality, you committed murder, if you was a disobedient child to your parents, those, the end result of those violations of the law could be murder, I mean death, right? Mm. The, the punishment, the judgment is not the law. The law is what you're supposed to do. Mm. Remember to keep your Sabbath holy. That's the law. Now, when, when you go into the Old Testament, there was a man collecting sticks on the Sabbath. Mm. They did not know what to do with somebody who broke the law. So they went to Moses. Moses went to the Lord, and the Lord said, kill that man. So then that became the, the penal code, mm. the penal code to protect the society for lawbreakers. Mm. You get what I'm saying? So it's like the law is, uh, you must drive 20 mi 25 miles you know, in the streets, right? They got 25 miles per hour, yeah. right? Yeah. right? That's the law. Now, the, when you break that law, well, you get a ticket. 
right? So there has to be a law about how much the ticket has to be. Then there has to be a law on, there has to, we, then we need police officers, we need judges, we, need, and we have to have a law, what is the penalty of this person keeps breaking this law. Those things are not necessary, those are not the laws of God. Mm. Those are judgments that was added to keep man in order, mm. right? That form did not work because we're rebellious people, right? So he said, you know what, I'm gonna remove the judgment out the way, right? And I'm going to just tell you, do the law. But what about if I don't? Don't worry about that. I'm going to leave it up to you. You decide. And I'm going to leave you alone. So what, the, what Christ is teaching is imagine a world that there's no police officer. There's no court system. There's no uh, correction officer. There's no jails. Everybody's doing what it's supposed to do. Imagine that world. Oh, like paradise. Exactly. <laughs> So now what Christ was teaching you is mastering your mind, self-control, that you don't need an overseer, right. like a Levi, a rabbi, to watch over you. Mm. You're a grown-up. Mm. Self-control yourself. It's like the whole concept, and a lot of, you know, I use a lot of these uh, uh, scenarios, is that when you go to a karate school, you're a white belt, and you get yellow belt, mm. green belt, blue, and brown, and eventually you become a black belt, and you are a master. Mm. We need to be, become master of oneself. Because when you go into the teachings of Christ, first he has disciples. The word disciple, the, the etymology of the word of disciple is discipline, right? Apostle is what? Teacher or master. That's why, you know, uh, people misunderstand the relationship between uh, servants obey your masters. This is not talking about slavery. This is talking about teachers obeying your, your, your uh, servants Students obeying your teachers. So that's what they're talking about. Mm. So it, it, it's, it's a discipline that you have your self-control. You don't need anyone or the fear of enforcement doesn't, ne ne doesn't have to be in your life because you're self-control. Mm. So the New Testament, that's the reason I love it so much because it actually brought that out like, wow, okay, that's the challenge now. Mm. I have to de control myself mm -hmm. and discipline myself. I'm not, I don't need a police officer. I don't need the fear of getting in trouble. Mm. I'm not going to deal with that. I don't care about the penalty because I'm not going to take my body there. And listen, I've been doing this for 20 years and I'm still, it's a lifelong journey. You know, I'm probably going to master, achieve masterhood when I'm grade and mm -hmm. old and still got to work some more. Right. So it's a life journey. So, so that's the secret of the gospel. Be, be renewed, be, uh, be born again by the renewing of your mind. You have to start thinking different. Mm. And eventually your body, this has been proven, I don't want to be long-winded, that if you start disciplining your body, biologically mm. your body starts changing. I'm going to give you an example. I could testify to this. I used to love pork, right? When my biggest thing, when I used to come home, my mother was, I was like 20, 19, I was you know, becoming a Hebrew, she smelled, I smelled up her knee. I was like, oh, damn. Now, I can't, my body has rejected it for so long. When I smell it, I can't even stay in the room. My body has, I become a new creature. Mm -hmm. So if you don't want, if you, there's a lot of signs in the Bible that people don't understand. Mm -hmm. You could change your biological right. makeup if you just force yourself and your body will eventually say, you know what? He doesn't want to do that anymore. Mm. So... It's a survival mechanism that don't, is endorphins no longer kicked out anymore. You get what I'm saying? Right, so, right, so you actually start changing your behavior by disciplining your flesh. Uh, and yeah. Good. And the Elder Hashar, uh, AOC, he mm. touched upon that on his presentation over at Sa'at Nethers where he was, told, he was breaking down the science behind meditation and how the scriptures tell us to meditate on the law. Yeah. When you do that, you actually change the molecular brain structure with, within you mm -hmm. to actually be able to focus longer and to uh, endeavor in the things that you're meditating upon. So mm -hmm. this world promotes that we meditate on sex, you know, because meditation is just deep thought. So the, the world promotes sex, it promotes food. Every commercial, every other commercial you see is either something dealing with sex, Glut it's dealing with something with food, it's dealing with something consumer, you know, uh, you know, clothing, all of these, uh, 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 you know, uh, vain things, you know fleshly type things, carnal things. And, but if you yeah. meditate on the law and you meditate on the scriptures, you can actually, you know, yeah, uh, develop. And, and, and 
the things that used to be hard for you don't become hard right. and the thing that used to be boring and lame and tiring and and arduous arduous becomes fun right you get what i'm saying yeah. like the I, I, when i used to be young i used to I, I was not liking the sabbath right yeah me too i was just gonna say that it was a, exactly. you were struggling yeah. with that right yeah yeah Come now you I can't wait to it. it's, it's, it's weird wait for it, you you start and the things that like i used to struggle with you just you just you just don't you have no joy like i won't see myself in a nightclub Right. I used to live in a nightclub in the weekends, right. and that's the reason why I used to hate the Sabbath. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Friday night, I'm like, oh man, I got, I got to read. You know, I got to read. Yeah. You know what I mean? Now it's not even a, 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 a thing. You know, you, and you look but, more forward to the to the Sabbath than you do to, to a club or oh, anything else. Exactly, man. It, and, and it sounds weird, but it just takes practice. Right. And then once you start saying, okay, I see this, the high signs of these scriptures. It's gonna be hard. It's not gonna be fun. You're gonna feel like you're losing out, but the reward of it when you start realizing is that you actually, once you discipline and you are not slave to your flesh, you could discipline and you could take more time to do other stuff like going to school, studying, reading more books, because you're not preoccupied with sex, women, right. you know, food, lust, hanging getting out with your clothes, boys, yeah. getting high. Yeah. You know, you're not act because that 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 lust is a bitchery. It doesn't stop. You want more. You want more. You want more. And if you consume on that, you it burns you, know, you out. You could spend ten years doing what that, and then you be you know a forty something year old nightclub still holding on to your youth right. because you don't know how to do anything else. You yeah. feel what I'm saying? You still live with your mom. You feel what I'm saying? So if you know how to deprive your, your, your lust, you could do a lot more because that is an attra a, a, a attraction. I mean, that's a, 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 a deterrent or, or you, you, you start getting distracted on doing that. And, you, and if you don't check that, you could spend all, your whole life wasting half your life doing that. So yeah. it is... is one of, one of the scriptures, uh, many scriptures changed my life, but one of the scriptures is um, Hebrews chapter 7. Mm -hmm. when, 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 when that is said that uh, about the, the struggle between the flesh and the spirit. Right, right. Oh, Romans. Ro uh, yeah, Romans. Romans, yeah. Romans chapter 7. Want me to get it? You know, it, it, you just, just touch on that a little bit. Just get it real quick. I, I think it's the right yeah, platform, yeah. but okay. I don't want to. All right, so this is Paul, right? First time. And he, and he yeah. was, and, and Paul was a, 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 a wonderful teacher. And Paul is one of the biggest misunderstood apostles that even Peter had to say, he had to defend him because many people misunderstood Paul because uh, he, he was, he, his, his, his type of thinking was on another level. So Paul was talking about the struggle between the flesh and the, and, and, and the spirit. Just, let's read that real quick. Right. This is the book of Romans chapter 7 verse 14. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not, but what I hate, that do I. So he's saying, what I hate, that's what I'm doing. So Paul, when you go into, um, yeah. you can finish. Sorry about yeah, that. It's okay. Okay. When Paul, when he, he was saying it, he was actually in his whole scripture, he was pouring his heart, his heart out because he was giving you the the, the struggle of life, you know, dealing with with lust mm -hmm. and things like that and. and and uh, the struggle between the, 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 the flesh and the spirit. And he was a single man. And he was a single man because he, he, was, he was celibate, right? right? Read. Verse 16. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now then, it is no more I that do it. So it's not you that you're doing this. Because you are your spirit. Mm. That's you. Right? And... Um, your spirit is trapped in this body, mm. right? This body is a gluttonous, lazy, backstabbing, evil person that all he wants to do is satisfy his lust mm. or her lust, right? You know, depending on female or male. And now you, your spirit is, is, is trapped in this body and you're grabbing, and that's what Paul says, that what I do, I allow not. And you're grabbing whatever it is, the weed, the alcohol, the number to call that chick, you, know, you understand what I'm saying? That you know you shouldn't be messing with. You, you grabbing, you know, reaching out for that. Your spirit's like telling you, no, 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 don't do it. But it's stuck in his body. Mm. Right? So that's what Paul's breaking down. Let's just keep going. 
Now then, it is no more I that do it. It's no longer the spirit is doing it because you are the spirit. Mm. You know, the flesh is, is just wasted away, but the spirit lives forever. Right, read. But sin that dwelleth in me. Uh huh. For I know that in me that is in my flesh. The, the flesh. Dwelleth no good thing. Uh huh. For to will is present with me. The will, I want to do the right thing, but it's hard. See, keeping these commandments is not for the fame of hearts. You can't be weak. Mm -hmm. Because what happened is, is that once when things become hard, mm -hmm. you start finding justification. Or you know, or rationalize it. Rationalize it right. because it's just, it's just, it's just, it's too hard. And that's where a lot of different doctrines come from. And that's too. where different doctrine comes on because since it becomes so hard to mm. actually do, you still actually start convincing yourself. Well, let me find a scripture. Then if this is so right. hard, this must be right. Right. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And let me find a scripture to justify that. Mm -hmm. Or let me start finding other religion to justify that. Mm. Yeah, but um, you want to be done on camera? Yeah. When you, when you, I'm saying no, no, no. no. Oh. When, when you live in a world that you have two opposing forces, right? Yes. You have an anti-Christ system, right? And then you have a Christ system. Yes. And when you have an anti-Christ system, where you have people who embody the principles of, let's say, the devil, or yes. let's say, uh, evil, and their heart is hardened, mm -hmm. they want nothing to do with the Christ system. They want to stay within the anti-Christ system. Yes. When they're there, for them to make somebody in the Christ system like them, they have to make you weak. They have yes. to weaken you down to their level because yes. that's how they feel satisfied. So they do yes. that by offering you sex, yes. offering you alcohol, right. offering you the club, right. offering you the lounges, right. offering you things that if you participate in them, right. it will break you down exactly. and make you in allegiance with the Antichrist system. Right. When you have this battle being waged by both forces, what do you do to stay in your square so that you don't go down to the Antichrist system and right. you stay elevated in the Christ system? Right. Beautiful how do you question. do that? The first thing you need to do is get yourself a, get, first of all, you're not as strong as you think you are. So you got to know that, right? So you know that what is your weakness and what's your, what, what is your, your, your strong. So you don't put yourself in certain uh, 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 um, elements unless you have mastered that. You get what I'm saying? So you got to know what level of spirituality you're in. So the first thing you do is you don't hang out with certain people that you know you're not strong enough to resist, right? The second thing you got to do is create a support system. You know, I used to be a counselor, and one of the things with AA is you need a, a, a buddy, a system. Mm -hmm. When you're feeling weak, you're feeling you need, you know. So the church is the AA meeting for sin. You know, so you're a sinaholic. Mm -hmm. So therefore, when you are, when you understand that your flesh only wants to do that, and not only uh, uh, it's a, imagine you are a alcoholic or a, a recurring alcoholic, and everybody is an alcoholic around you, and the only people that are not drinking are the people in your church. Right. So that's the same thing with sin. So the, the, dealing with that, you gotta first master yourself. That's why I tell people when you first come to this truth, don't tell people you're an Israelite. First, master, first start working on yourself. Okay, what I need to work on? What's my issue? What can I work on this? And you gotta be honest with you. You gotta have a true conversation with you. And write them down if you need to. And once you do that, work on those things. And then once you start starting silly working on those things, people are gonna do two things. You're gonna start bothering them. They're gonna like, because it's, it's all spirit. They're gonna pick it up like, mm -hmm. what you into, dude? Right. You understand you what change, I'm saying? You change. Now, that's the reason why people uh, trigger to either trigger too quick. I don't start talking about breaking the Sabbath, you can't, you know, mm -hmm. eating pork. I don't talk to them, but don't talk, don't do that. Mm. Let first every new member that comes to my church say, Listen, this is your challenge. Don't tell people you're a Hebrew Israelite, don't tell them anything. Start changing within and let them ask you the question, like, Dude, there's something, something different about you. And then you can go into the scriptures. Mm. What people do is before they have made that change. They were smoking weed last week, and now they want to talk about keeping the Sabbath holy. You get what I'm saying? Right. They came home, you know, uh, uh, drunk. Right. You know, you know what I'm saying? And they want to go, you know, I, can, I don't eat pork, but that's nasty. Whatever. They don't. They gotta first do that that transition, and then and then let let your light shine for them. People could come to you. So once you do that, and they start seeing that, two things. They're gonna start poking you. You know, right. they're gonna stop pulling out what you did last year. 
You know, you were riding with me to do last, you know. You, know, you understand what I'm saying? Right, right, right. But since you've been training and you haven't been challenged yet because you haven't bring nothing out, you just been normal. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Right. And now you're going, you, you're finding uh, friendship within the church. You're finding, you, you, you're getting uh, into these scriptures. So by the time they, they get into, you know, they start asking you those questions and you start becoming a new creature, mm. you're already at a level, you're at least a, a, a red belt, I mean, a, a yellow belt. Right, right. You get what I'm saying? You're not coming into with your family smoking weed like you being a white belt. Mm. You're going you, you're gonna, to you're gonna fall. So you have to separate yourself. And it's hard to do that when you're in the world, but you can separate yourself mentally. But don't tell people. That's the problem with, with our brothers, that we start bringing the Hebrew, you know, garbage the, 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 you know, and, and start doing that as, as a, and I, could, I could get it, that you want to take pride on, on your culture and all that. Mm. But that sometimes brings more tension than, because, and especially with, with, with what I tell, you know, my people is that, when this reason nine times out of ten, people reject the truth because their first introduction to the truth is negative. Mm. You can't eat pork. You can't work on a Sabbath. You can't do this. You can't. It's can't. 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 So the, their first introduction is, what can I do? Right. And if, if you're still acting the same, you haven't changed. What benefit is in, in within the Hebrew culture? So if you start working on yourself and don't tell anything, you feel so I make something up in regards uh, why you you know you don't work in the Sabbath, why you don't eat certain things. You just you know oh, you know I don't want to eat meat, but I always just take the rice. And, you know, I'm good. You just make something up. You feel what I'm saying? Right. And let them see like nah, dude, there's something's up with you. Then you can start bringing it up. But by, by that time, you already have some level of of, of mastery mm. to some degree that that you could start taking the onslaught. So either two things are gonna happen. Because they saw that possibility in you, they're gonna be like, uh, so what church you, 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 you know, what, 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 are you, what are you, Muslim? What, what's going on? Nah, I'm a Hebrew, this and that. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna come through next week. It's a positive because they've seen that. And so I tell my people, listen, if you owe people money, give them that. Hey brother, you know, I know, I know you, lent, you, bought me, you, bought, you, know, you lent me $50 two years ago. All right. Here you go. Start repaying all Hey you. mom, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, and thank you for being my mom. You know what I'm saying? The sisters. You know what I mean? Honor your husband. Husband come home like, I'm used to. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? So they start seeing positive things first, and then their first introduction to the truth is a positive thing, not a negative. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Right. So it, it, it is, it's, it's, so to answer your question is, you gotta work on yourself. Once you work on yourself, then you say, okay, uh, 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 and you got to, Figure out what stand you're gonna do. Like, if you're not, if you not figure out you want to be a Hebrew or not, you're still on the fence. You're still asking questions. Don't tell anybody. Just get all the all the questions out the way. You know, like in my congregation, I want you to ask me questions. So then, once you get out the way, then we can move together. Then we we got out the way. If you're still like, and the scripture says, um, give me that that lukewarm in the Revelation, I think two to sixteen or to nineteen. If you look warm, the most is gonna spill you out. So I want people to be like, okay, I'm down. It's like, you know, get me baptized. I'm ready to, you know, take all, 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 everything I, I'm ready to go. Well, you know, so once you, you commit it, then you're more sure about yourself. So if you're not sure whether we is off, some people believe we, you know, you could do we because God gave man to herbs and, and all that. You get what I'm saying? Okay. Well, I went, oh, yeah, oh, so, sorry, sorry. so first, master at least the doctrine, agree with the doctrine, and then once you do that, you won't be swayed. So as an as a elder, mm -hmm. because you regard it as an elder in mm -hmm. your community, you have made that transition, that initial orientation yeah. transition into a more elder transition. Yeah. And as an elder, when you see the antichrist system in effect, mm -hmm. doing what it does. Yes. And you have observed and practiced a discipline for 10, 20 years. How do you analyze the Antichrist system? How do you see it from your vantage point, from the vantage point well, of the elder? It's, it's the, the, the system, what I realize is that I'm studying more what I would consider Antichrist systems to learn what they're thinking. Because they're smart. 
They smart. You gotta know you. You gotta be in your A game. <laughs> and if you don't know what you're doing or saying, or, you know, so you gotta, you know, you 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 gotta be a jack of all trades in many things. You gotta know history. You gotta know science. You gotta know uh, philosophy. Not that uh, to that you go into those things, but you know enough about those things that once the anti Christ uh, anti Christ uh, system comes to attack you, you can maneuver. Uh, and you know what angle they're coming from. So, and it, and it works on both sides because there's certain brothers that are into certain things. Like for instance, there may be certain brothers that are into a lot of the conspiracy theory thing. That's their thing. Uh, you have certain brothers that they're into, you know, black power. Uh, you got brothers that are into aliens and, and, and into terrestrial, into stars and things of that nature. So you should learn a little bit about everything. So then you know which angle to come at each person. You know, somebody loves aliens. You, you know, aliens are in the Bible, really. Then you can go into that uh, on you. So, be prepared and know. You know, knowing is half the battle, and study their their uh, books and their philosophy and what they what they're doing. You know, and things like that. And I've been doing that in the last two three years much more because before you just you just study the Bible and you study other. Now, I do study, and this thing I always used to do, even when I was in my early 20s, try to disprove the Bible. Like, I used to, that was like a thing I used to do for myself, and that, that really helped me to validate the Bible. Like, I actually try to prove, disprove the Bible, through science, to this, and that, and the other. And then they always come short, so it's, I, that has trained me, so when I come across the atheist or what have you, I know what angle they're going to come up with, you know, and things of that nature. So, is, is be a jack of all trades. Uh, know your weaknesses um, and understand that this is you're not convincing people I, I, I'm a big believer that the people that are out there who are supposed to be chosen or you're looking for people that are wired a certain way and I think that's part of the elect concept I think God created those that are going to be the elect biologically and psychologically and even you know uh, the, the way their brain waves work is different for someone who is not chosen I think scientifically there is certain data that you could probably see this guy could be one of the chosen this data why because they have been proven that when people uh, they call it the God gene that they have taken certain tests with certain people that when you read certain spiritual, uh, like the Bible, their brain waves tingle, start moving, and other people just stay flat. It's been proven scientifically. Now, clearly we don't, we don't wanna be walking around with these machines trying to figure those things out, right? Mm -hmm. So what they have studied is certain behaviors. So there's certain behaviors you're gonna look for, and it takes to, it takes to experience and practice, you realize, this guy may be a potential one. He may be one of the chosen. And, and the scripture it, says, yeah. to those that gladly receive the word. Right. And every single time people have come to the truth, it has been like, yo, where you been all my life? Right. I knew something was wrong. I just couldn't put my finger at it. <laughs> you don't need much convincing. They, they eat it up. You understand what I'm saying? So I don't spend too much time debating these guys. You know, they, they don't want to see it because their brain was not predestined to be wired to accept these things. So it's all, it's biological, it's scientific, it, all that is in there. So you know, okay. yeah, I hope that answers your question. Okay. If I could get a scripture real quick, because I think it goes hand in hand. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. This is in the book of Sirach, which is in, uh, or Ecclesiasticus, which is in the Apocrypha, uh, chapter 2. It says, My son, if thou come to serve the Most High, prepare thy soul for temptation. Set thy heart aright, and constantly endure and make not haste in time of trouble. Cleave unto him and depart not away, that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully, and be patient when thou art changed to a low estate. For gold is tried in the fire, and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. Believe in him, and he will help thee. Order thy way aright, mm -hmm. and trust in him. Ye that fear the Most High 
wait for his mercy and go not aside lest ye fall. Mm -hmm. So, right, brother. So, when you're dealing with a member right. or members mm -hmm. of the Antichrist system, mm -hmm. and they come in with the cloak of yeah. a commission, right. of a Christian, of a Muslim, of a Hebrew. Now they come into you with the uniform mm -hmm. of those schools of thought, mm -hmm. but they're really members of the Antichrist system. How can you test and find out and also deal from? with someone yeah. of that particular state? You know, it, it is almost like a spiritual uh, exorcism. It's like, and we dealt with this with, with, with certain membership, either, you know, New York or, or, or abroad, you may have a, a brother or sister that is seeking the most high, but they're dealing with the spirit. You gotta challenge them. You gotta call them in their bull crap. You gotta, you can't be nice. You gotta call it what it is. You gotta lock the doors. It's almost like a mental, you know, uh, 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 situation that you have to brainwash them. No, not brainwash them. You gotta, uh, you gotta try the spirit. You gotta try the spirit, but it's almost like locking down the doors. We're gonna stay here for six, seven hours, and we're gonna get to the bottom of it. And eventually, two things will happen. They will break down and cry and admit, yes, I have an anger issue, or yes, I have a jealous issue, or yes, whatever it is. And then once you, you gotta almost like bid them, uh, 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 knock them down and build them back up. And that takes time. That takes the community, that takes, you know, training, that takes you know uh, some level of understanding human behavior and things of that nature, or they will just leave. Get out of here! I'm out of here because that spirit really took them. Remember, many are called, but few are chosen. So it, it is. It, it is a. Um, you have to decide the both. Sometimes you have someone who is going to be good at the end, and. They are got to deal with a lot of drama that you have to work through, you know, because we're broken people. I mean, we, we, you know, look at the statistics. One out of three sisters get raped or molested in their lifetime. One out of three brothers are in, in jail or been in jail. Uh, unemployment is like 51%. Uh, most families are raised in single homes. Those, those statistically are caused when I, those people that come through those, those doors are going to come with those dramas. You understand what I'm saying? And within a black and Latino community, sometimes we have helped certain issues in because we are too macho to talk about it or we're too ashamed because we don't have that type of uh, mechanism or structure to deal with those things openly. So you gotta kinda decipher those things. If you're dealing with an enterprise kind of person and sometimes they sneak in, or you're dealing with someone who's just simply broken and they gotta be, you know, they need help. So. It, 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 it just takes experience and it takes patience because, you know, in the beginning, you usually want to write them off as being wicked and evil. But when, when time and, 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 and you realize, okay, this person is, is just damaged, you know, so how do you know? It, it's just, you just know. And there's one thing about our people, we got that sixth sense, man. Mm -hmm. And through experience and we humble ourselves and we come. And we stop self-controlling ourselves. The spirit will just tell us. It, it, I don't want to sound like a crazy person, but you just pick it up, and it just takes time. You know, I, I takes it takes a long time for me to judge a person. Like I just let it ride. I just you know just let you be. You know, and usually that person will manifest itself. You know, you know all my you know all you know my church. I'm a very lucky go lucky kind of guy. I, I'm not strict. You know, I got laws and rules you got to do and things of that nature, but sometimes I let you ride because I want the real you. You get what I'm saying? I want the comfortable you. In the beginning, everybody's, oh, Elder, God, I can't believe you. Oh, CC, uh, <laughs> you're going to get that. You're going to go to the honeymoon stage. Then the same stage, that's going to die out, and then you're going to go into the, the, the real stage. And then after that, once we go over, you go over that hump, then it's the dependent stage, meaning we are depending on each other. We are kind of like married to each other. We're like... We can't live without each other. It's right. like we, we don't see each other. We, you know, we miss each other. Yeah. Like we live for the weekend because we live for the Sabbath. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like I get, I get to the church. I don't get home until like, what, 12 o'clock at night because after that we go get something to eat. You want to go see a movie. We're hanging out. The right. wives and sisters are hanging out. It, it, it becomes a family. So how do you, do you answer your question? I know I, 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 I'm rambling. It takes experience and 
it takes a level of just waiting because the spirit will reveal it to you. Patience. Patience. So I hope that answers your question. When um, you was talking about the debate, mm -hmm. you were saying you was not really too concerned with winning or losing. Mm -hmm. When you was a part of that environment, did you, did your spirit feel an antichrist presence? Did it feel a pro-Christ presence? What kind of presence did you feel, especially in the administration part of the debate? Hmm, that's a good question. You know, I, I have lived long enough to know that I'm never too old to be surprised. So, the, you know, we always leave the door open for a possibility. Because you never know what is the end result. So I don't like to make any, yeah, this person is part of the Antichrist system. He's evil. He, you know, I don't, I don't like this type of claim because we don't know. And it's like one of those things that, you ever been a kid, you know, you got a group of kids and they all done, you know, they kind of like live the same type of lifestyle. And when they grow up and they, they, they do like a class reunion or something, one guy is like a, a minister. The other guy is a cop. The other guy is a porno star. The other guy is a, uh, he's a transvestite now. Now, you, when you was a kid, you were like, I never knew these people would turn out so different. You get what I'm saying? But those things, those, those attributes were there. The guy who became a minister, he was always struggling with his spirituality. He just didn't tell you because you were too, you know, they were too busy drinking beer or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So the same thing, is now we're now we 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 all are are a battering and going to these debate and things of that nature, but we don't know what is the end result of what everything is, is has being played out and things of that nature. So the the anti spirit is there, is among us, but I don't like to call out anyone. Yeah, you're you're part of that in things of that nature because I really don't know that in the last days that he may be repented and be like you know what, right. You know, and it could be the person that we least suspect. Right, right. Him? Her? Right. You know, so, uh, uh, that, and, and I have lived long enough to know that I have always been shocked on, on that. So, prodigal son. Yeah, prodigal, prodigal, prodigal son. son. So, so I hope that answers your question. Yeah. So, in other words, <clears throat> if I get what you're saying, um, because, all right, so when you read your scriptures, mm -hmm and it gives you uh, the armory, the tools necessary mm -hmm. to um, discern the difference between the Christ system, the anti-Christ system, mm -hmm. and you're in an environment that there's a filtering system that yeah. you're going through as you're observing and as you're participating within that environment. Mm -hmm. How much of just your presence in the environment infects the environment with a more pro-Christ system. In other words, like they say that a lot of times your example is mm -hmm. greater than whatever you can say or whatever right. you can do. Right. And when you have a certain um, constitution based on your lifestyle, you can project that. Right. So when you in there, did you feel yourself being able to project that? Did you feel that being circulated? Or it was more neutral and you was just dealing with shock utmost and then... Uh, to the side. Well, you know, I know when we first came to the scene, people were shocked that we, we act a certain way and, and things of that nature. And um, we, we understand that there is a need for all kinds of Hebrews, you know, and, and because things are the way they are, there's a certain image that you, you, you get in your head when you see a Hebrew. When you hear the word Hebrew Israelite, or oh, those those dudes out in the streets cursing people out, or, or, or what have you, that's been the image, and sometimes that image has been unfairly uh, tapped into that because they is sometimes speak truth to power, and sometimes when you don't when you do that, you get you're not popular, and sometimes and and, and it, there has been situation that uh, that aggressiveness was not uncalled for, right? Um, so what we wanted to do is just say that let, let's, you know, geosis, let's get our hat in the ring, so to speak, 
uh, to show there is a different type of Hebrew out there. For whatever reason to, maybe for the people that would say, I love what those brothers are saying, but I need to find another church that approaches a little different. And that's, we're here. You know, so if your spirit more aligns with, with up, our spirit, you're going to gravitate to us. And then I was having this conversation with Nassi and Brother Ashad is that eventually once we come together and we going to always have little differences of doctrine, right? And it's going to be a situation that we're going to have a, a national like rule of ethics that we're not going to speak negative about each other. Right? We're not going to mm -hmm. use combative words. That brother's wicked. That, that camp is wicked. We're not going to not, not, not do that. And we're going to respectfully disagree with each other in regards of doctrine. And, and if we cannot build our congregation in by knocking our brothers down, the only thing we could do is just bring our quality of services or quality of, con you know, of, of, of we have to compete, but not in a way of, okay, we have to step a game up. You get what I'm saying? But I can't, I'm not going to stick my game up on bashing on this brother or bashing on this doctrine or bashing on that. You get what I'm saying? So by default, you're going to get a better quality Hebrews because it's just like, okay, I see, I see Jewish is doing it this way. I see they get a lot of followers. You know, I see a shot. I, you know, I like the way he, maybe I, I should apply something of that. So we're going to be competing, but not in, in, a, in a malicious kind of way. Right. You get what I'm saying? And then when we need to come together, boom, we come together. You get what I'm saying? So, and it's gonna be, there's gonna be a Hebrew church for every type of personality. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it, it, it's whatever for, you know rocks your boat. And, and it's, I like this. I like this camp. I'm gonna roll with that camp. Right. Yeah, grab it. I, I don't know if you got if you guys got into great detail behind the scenes, but it seems like a great idea. Like if you guys, what I'm getting to is, whoever's a Hebrew, they can be a Hebrew, and there can be, like schools of attributes like if right. you're a fire sign you could be down with the exactly. aoc camp right. if you're a water sign you might be down with the gocc right. camp yeah. but there's always a place for you and you don't have to feel intimidated exactly. if you're not just in that particular exactly. moment so it'll be like a full circle hebrew nation right that you guys can create it, it, if that's exactly. the ultimate plan that sounds like a great plan yeah that's that and we talked about that that you know that certain brothers are just set a built a certain way right and they're going to gravitate to certain right. camps and, and so like, the brothers that you know uh, 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 you know, we're, we're, we're more like a family oriented kind of church. We, right. we have a, a Christian kind of uh, vibe right. because that's the population we want to attract. Right. Okay. Um, and, and, you know, uh, but we could, you know, we also do, we're going to be implementing like, you know, exercise for the brothers. We do that in summer. We right. have those, those things. I know Brother uh, Victoria is going to be, you know, mm -hmm. dealing with that. So we got something for that. So it's going to be like we're going to be up in our game, right. but it's going to be like not on smashing on another camp. It's going to be like, okay, we need to look among our camp because the way the order is going to be is going to be uh, church, our camp first, and then nation. And that's, nat that's naturally it's going to be. Mm -hmm. Like, for instance, if I'm looking for to, uh, to buy fringes or, or, or garments or what have you, or, or what, you know, if somebody in my church doesn't have those services, okay, hey, Ashar, you got somebody? Yeah, the, you get the, what I'm the lines of Israel could be the, the, the people who have that. Right. You guys have something else. Exactly. And we all come exactly. together. And we have to start attracting other people from people from different uh, uh, tax brackets. Mm. Socioeconomics. Socioeconomics. You understand what I'm saying? We need lawyers. We need doctors. We need people, and they, they could creep up in the uh, up in the echelon. They don't, you know, they 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 are Hebrews, and they could be proud Hebrews and things of that nature. And then eventually, uh, give me that scripture about be friends with Mammon. Yeah. Right. Eventually, the camps are going to realize. You know what? Maybe, perhaps, and then that's ultimately. Um, I hope that many of the camps realize, you know what, maybe hopping on the white man so much should not be our focus point. Maybe falling back on that a little bit, right, and then focusing on, on other angles, okay, and you don't have to change doctrine. Mm -hmm. you, know, you understand what I'm saying? You don't have to, like, for instance, you could tell a Gentile or, or, like, for instance, you know, we accept Gentiles. But let's say you're in a camp, they don't accept Gentiles. 
You don't have to say they're the white man's devil and all that. Mm -hmm. You can say, well, right now we focus on the children of Israel. According to uh, commandments, we have to go, you know, we have to come first and things of that nature. But you know what? You know, you just keep the commandments, you never know. Shalom, brother. You understand what I'm saying? Right. Uh, you know, just, you know, you know, right now we're, we're, we're focusing on the children of Israel. And eventually, and you could go into the scriptures. Right. Because these brothers, they, they're deep into the scriptures. And eventually, if they're going to reject you, they're going to reject you because of the scriptures. Not where, because you cursed them out. Right. And usually, you usually come out looking better anyway because eventually they're going to come out and, and start attacking you and raise, you know, and, and, and these two cars are going to come out anyway. So it's just different, uh, a different approach that eventually we could all learn from each other mm. and things of that nature. Right. You know, so I hope that's the question. I have an uh, actual... I have an actual theory, mm -hmm. or a, a, I don't want to say perception, but uh, this is my this is my thought. Yes. In regards to the white man versus the black man, and I think that everyone is actually influenced mm -hmm. by parasites. Cause it, my brother over here, is, well, he's, he's over here laughing at me. I ain't gonna say his name on mm -hmm. camera. We had a, a huge discussion on this last night, actually. Mm -hmm. And I think it's so funny that you bring this up that we shouldn't maybe take that approach because it's not the popular view. But um, my personal thing is that I, I, I address health. Anybody that follows me on social network or whatever or Facebook, they know that I'm a fruitarian. And um, I push that heavily. And I, early in, in our conversation, you said that you used to eat pork and then you stop and then your body just rejected it. You could mm -hmm. smell the corruption in the air. You could smell it. You mm -hmm. no longer crave those things. Right. And my perception or my approaches that we actually all being influenced by parasites that want these certain activities that we that we call dysfunctions or that you guys are fighting. Yeah. And um I don't think that it's the white man that is the per se devil. Mm -hmm. I think that their hardware mm -hmm. because of their imbalance or their dysfunction or in their hardware what what they're built when I say built I mean skin. Mm -hmm. Um the parasites working them the best. Yes, that's what I. That's my and I perception. Agree with you. And I agree with you. And uh, like, see, most people misconstrued mm. that just because GOC we accept Gentiles, right. it means you know, go marry white people. You know, okay. you know, we're not we're not into that. Right. You know, and the scripture talks about you should not, uh, mix you know, yourself mix yourself amongst the nations. The nations. Right. You should not mix. You know, uh, 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 corrupt your royal seed. Right, now, right. it is the reason why, and it, it is. Let me bring the scientific and right. also spiritual aspect of it. We believe that there was a long time ago a group of angelic forces mm. came down and corrupted their DNA mm. with man's DNA. This is called the fallen. This is called the fallen angels, right? And their corrupted DNA. Now, when the scripture when it says, and this is like like I said, now whole Hebrew Israelites. Uh, uh, embrace the fallen angels concept, right. you know. So, so you know. So, uh, uh, but we do. So that DNA was they corrupted the DNA, and it became a situation when you go into the book of Genesis that uh, they defiled themselves even with beasts. Mm. So they metamorphosed to something else, and these became the the matter of fact, get that in Genesis, and these became uh, men renowned. Mm. So when you go in every culture, mm -hmm. whether it be the Hindus, the Egyptians, right. the, they always have the, what you call demigods, the mm. Greeks. Gods had relations what? with women and created these demigods. I'm half man, half God. Mm. Right? And also you have these gods um, having, you know, some uh, having animal heads and, and male bodies and mm. things of that nature. We think that this was something that it was mythological. Mm. But from what I found that it was actually real and biological mm. and there was high science that was tapping into this. Mm. So imagine that you had the technology to mix a man with a horse. I and, think I think that actually happens now with the, yeah, with the and GMO. And it's happening now. Yeah, with the products. And right, it's foods, happening which, now. It's a whole alchemical process. Or a or, or mix of uh, 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 splicing. Yeah. Or having a lion face mm. in a man's body. Mm. To the primitive man, he would be a god. Mm. But it's all science. You, you understand? Mm. So, uh, what we call magic is what they call science, mm. right? So, in the ancient world, I believe they believe they be, I believe they get to tap into that. Do now we believe that the the tribes of Esau, 
right, which is our close brother, tapped into the Horites. The Horites were a a say a, a, a family of Canaanites that were heavily polluted with the DNA of the Nephilim. Mm. So, and you could see the, some traits within the white race in regards of they had certain genetic uh, DNA makeup that you could only find in fish. Mm. You know, uh, it's like a very rare kind of uh, genetic pull and things of that nature because they're more corrupted into the genetic mm. situation. So outside of the understanding, if you understand that, that even a white person said, you know what, I am more genetically corrupted. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Right. He, and I he, he wants to start keeping the commandments. Mm -hmm. He was like, you know what, let me not corrupt mm -hmm. the nation of Israel mm -hmm. with my cancer. Right. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? I get what you're yeah. saying because from my perspective, which I've, I've dubbed ready for raw because I encourage raw food. And yeah. I'm going to even ask you to go into the Bible, um, Genesis 29, actually, and I yeah. think it's 30. I'm not too good with the Bible, so right. I apologize for saying that. No, no, but you're referring to when, when in the beginning we only ate herbs. Right. I'm gonna, that's true. Right, and I'm, we're going to go back to that in the kingdom. Right, right. right. Yeah, and, and see, and that's exactly what I'm uh, propagating yes. in, in my health paradigm is that it's not the most newest thing. It seems new because of the actual preparation that I do with the foods. Yeah. But I think that the Bible actually has the dietary plan that I'm talking about, which is a raw fruit diet. And it has a distinct this uh, difference in right. verse 29 and verse 30. And I had a friend, I had a conversation with a friend of mine. <laughs> besides right. me, if you know his voice, you could know who he is. Right. I won't say his name. Um, and I think that what I'm talking about is in the Bible okay. and it's there. But I want to go back to the dysfunction. I want to yeah. say this before you and go Let me read this scripture before you yeah, go okay. into tap into right. the Genesis 6, uh, Genesis 6 chapter 1 from, from the way we see it. This is the book of Genesis chapter 6 verse 1. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth uh -huh. and daughters were born unto them. Okay. That the sons of the Most High saw the daughters of men. This is the sons of God, saw the daughters of man, read. Yes. That they were fair. They were beautiful. Mm -hmm. And they took them wives okay. of all which they chose. Now, other Hebrew Israelites would say that the sons of God is not referring to angels, but is referring to the sons of Set. Yes. So there's different theology in regards to differences. But from the Jewish perspective, from our region, we believe these are the sons, the physical sons of God, which you would call fallen angels, right, mm -hmm. read. Verse 3. And the Lord said, my spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he is also flesh, yet his days shall be in 120 years. So 120 years, that doesn't mean, that doesn't mean the life of, of, of a man. I mean, mm. from, a, from that position, that's when the Most High decided to, he's going to flood the world. And that's what, you know, so if from that point into 120 years, that's when the Noah got in the ark mm. and, 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 um, uh, and, 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 you know, closed the door. Read. There were giants in the earth in those days. The word giants, and you go into the Hebrew, it's Nephilim, which means the fall, which means fallen. Right? Mm. Read. And also after that. Okay, go ahead. And also after that. And also after that, meaning it kept going. Read. When the sons of God when came. The son, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men. Came unto the daughters of men. Read. And they bare children and, to them. And they bare those children, and these children became what? The same became mighty men. Mighty men. Which were of old. Which were old. Men of renown. Men of renown, meaning when you go in the word, the word legends. So when you go into many myth, mythology mm -hmm. of pre post flood, they are talking about the legends of post flood. So when you go into like Egypt mythology or Hindu mythology or mm -hmm. Babylonian mythology and these great giants and these great battles and things like that, you think they just made it up. They are actually talking about the stories that happened before the flood. Mm. These became the, 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 the Greek gods, the, mm. the mythology. And when you go mm. into every culture, they have these mythology, these, these, these mythology of Zeus and, you know, uh, Thor. And, these, and they all what? Fell in love with a woman, had sex, and then, you know, uh, what's the guy? Uh, Hercules. Hercules. He, he's supposed to be what? A yeah. demigod. Right, right, His right. father is uh, Zeus. Zeus, right? Right. And Zeus, and right. So all these things... Uh, so the scripture is telling you these, these giants became the mythology, mm. the, the men of renown, right? Let's, uh, let's read. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, uh -huh. and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. 
Now, let me show you how, how deep they went, right? Read. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on earth. Okay, so when you go into the much deep understanding, the word there is Allah mm -hmm. right? That means they repented the gods. The word repent there, it means pity, right? So that statement, it wasn't necessarily God himself. Because that's a whole different discussion. God created Christ. Christ created us and the angels. And then that actual statement, when the gods, when you go into the book of Enoch, it was actually the angels were upset that this was happening. Mm. And they were like, because the angels don't know everything. They don't know the future. Only the Most High knows the future. Mm. The only thing they know is what is revealed by, to them by the Father, right? So they were like, they were repenting that this was happening. They were confused. And that is recorded in the book of Enoch. It gives you more understanding. So sometimes we think that this is God, but when you go into the word there, it's Allah, we mean gods. Mm. That's why it says, let us create man in our own image. That's, so that's plural. Yeah, so that's, and it's, our yeah. image. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I read so, that last night and I right. was like, oh shit, yeah, yeah, our image. So the problem is, the problem is, is that people translate the word as plural, it's supposed to be, I mean, a singular is supposed to be plural. Yeah, right. That's, okay, yeah, exactly. and, 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 and let me show you what else they did, right? Read. And it grieved him at his heart. Come on. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created. I destroy man who I have created, read. From the face of the earth, uh -huh. both man and beast, uh -huh. and creeping thing, uh -huh. and the fowls of the air. And the reason why he had to even destroy the animals, read. For it repenteth me that I have made them. Come on. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Uh, go in the part where he, they, they begin to defile themselves with, with, with animals. Awesome. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, uh -huh. and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Uh -huh. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said... Right, so when you go into the book of Enoch, it goes into more details. What, the, what was the wickedness? They began to... Um, because you think about it, what was so sin... What was the big deal with having... It's verse 11. Verse 11, that's it. Okay, go there. The earth also was corrupted before the Most High. So the earth was corrupted before the Most High, read. Mm. And the earth was filled with violence. With violence. And God looked upon the earth. And when you go into the, uh, the Gugamish tablets, it talks about uh, there were ten nations, and there were giants, and they were ruled by gods. And they were all fighting with one another. And they found that in India, right? These were one of the oldest writings. And it talks about the flood. It talks about that. The flood story is one of the most popular stories of all ancient culture. This proves there must have been a flood. Mm. There must have been something going on because you could find this, right? Some cataclysm. Something happened. Yeah, something happened. Plus, you know. Exactly. Exactly. Right. So let's read that. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. Uh huh. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me. For the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. All right, and when you go into the book of Enoch, they began to even sleep with animals, and they found themselves with, with, with beasts. So they had that knowledge. Mm -hmm. You know, what we call today, what you would consider in, improbable, uh, they had high line, high level of knowledge. They had, like for instance, when you go into uh, and something else that we, from our research, most people think that when you look at the Mayan, Cal the Mayan uh, uh, pyramids, uh, and the Egyptian pyramids, the major, the major three, the, the Sphinx, and the Mayan, they were, they were created pre-flood. I mean, post-flood, they were created pre-flood. Right. The three major pyramids are older. Giza. The Giza pyramids are older than all the other pyramids, and they are most intact. They're most intact. They are superior in construction. Okay look like some giants built them, mm -hmm. right? Because these boulders are humongous, and so they don't know how it, in God's green earth they were able to, to, uh, to move this. And all the other pyramids are smaller and of a lecture uh, uh, technology. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they, that with the, the Giza is, is, I think, granite? Yeah, I think limestone. Limestone, limestone, limestone. And the other one is like mud, you know, granite. You know, it's, 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 it's inferior in mm -hmm. technology. So therefore, what the scholars are saying, and they have found water residue on top of the pyramids. Mm -hmm. Okay, and they wonder, you know, it doesn't rain much in Egypt. So why this was because it was probably underwater. Right. And the Mayan uh, calendar, the Mayan pyramids, right? And you see these Mayans 
uh, structure or these drawings of people going into some form of uh, flying saucer or some form of instrument. Mm -hmm. and they see they, they find little uh, uh, little planes and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. These were fallen angel technology. Mm -hmm. Chariots. Chariots before the flood. So what happened is, is that when the 10 tribes of Israel, when they find themselves into America, they found these ruins of pre-flood. And they begin to honor these gods. Mm. And there's even legend within the Native American culture that they found even giants in, the, in America. Right. There's many they, legends. When they came here, they saw giants. They saw giants and they had long red hair and all that. And they burned them out in the cage and all that. Mm. And so, actually, even, even early uh, explorers, European explorers that came uh, to the so-called New World, there's accounts of them seeing giants as well. You have the, uh, the explorer, uh, what's his name? The one that found Argentina, he named uh, 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 what's the name of that, that place in Argentina? It, it's actually the, the lowest point in Argentina is by the ice cap. Um, oh, oh, uh, I better swallow. Uh, now, in Argentina, it's called uh, I forget it, but what he named it after was big footed, it was big footed giants. It's mm. called, it's called, what, what is it called? Paleo pop, uh. My part, the Google phone. Yeah, Google pull out the Google phone because I, it's slipping my mind right now. When you right. get it, we'll, we'll yeah, get back I, to it. I, but, yeah. Right. So, yeah. so, so go back into, you know, when, when a lot of stuff gets bypassed in the scriptures and we think it's like supernatural or mythology. Or hocus pocus hocus or spook focus. spookism. No, nah, there's a lot of high science going on. Mm. The, the, the ancient world was tapping into. Like, for instance, I want to give you an example. In the scriptures, the, the, this, uh, there, were, there were like two warriors of David. Uh, one of the warriors of David, because he had mighty men, and they, they were, it's one of the stories that he was walking, he fought and beat two lion-like men of Moab, right? So we, back in the days when I was being taught, I mm. was being, I, they taught me, well, they were learning the lion style. They were fighting like the lion. So that was like a martial arts style they were fighting. But when we did the research, you got it, Patagonia. 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 Patagonia, yeah. Right. So, when they did the research, when we, we found the research, we have found Moab, uh, you know, we all know the, the Moab stone, the Moab, the Moabite stone, mm. the Mesostella, these are all, the ancient Moab did exist, and there's evidence they, 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 they had a kingdom and things of that nature. They were mm. like an enemy of the June. They were, they were around Jordan, um, you know, where Yemen is at now. They have found artifacts of men walking men with lion faces mm. from a man's body. Was it supernatural, or they were tapping into some high level scientific, you know, science, uh, uh, sea, sea uh, splicing? And mm. we all know the story of like the, the movies like Dr. Moreau, or you saw that movie back right. in the days when yeah, it was a scientist that was in an island and he was mixing uh, animal seed with human seed and things of that nature. There's talk about that now. They put the first successful baboon heart in a human uh, girl and that she's living and things of that nature. That this science, what we think is new, is really all sudden science coming back. Mm. Right. So, so a, a lot of the stuff that goes on in the ancient world, we dismiss as mythology, but there was those things would happen. Right. So, so, uh, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Patagonia was founded by Magellan, the explorer Magellan, and he named it Patagonia. It means land of big feet, because he saw a giant people walking when he came to the shores of Patagonia. Mm. So, that's just, right. so yeah. when you go into the scriptures, when you have the Most High telling. Like the, the Hittites, the, 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 the parasites, the, 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 all, all the, the Canaanites, all these people, the Most High took one of the Israelites to wipe them out. Not because he, they, you know, he, he, he was an evil god, what have you, because they were infected with diseases of the Nephilim seed. Mm. You understand? Mm -hmm. And then we, they had the sons of Anak. They were giants mm. and things of that nature. So this is dealing with biological, and that's why we must be separate. So this has nothing to do with racism. We, this is actually preserving our race. So I hope that answers your right, question. Right, 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 right. When, when you do your studies, mm -hmm. and as an elder, mm -hmm. you come to an understanding of the kingdom of God, yes. the kingdom of heaven. And you look at this effort to try to get the Hebrew camps into some kind of a cohesive unity. Yes. How? do you envision or what kind of mirroring do you see between that merger of the Hebrew camps and what we would call the kingdom of heaven? Mm -hmm. How would they mirror each other, if at all? Well, I don't believe that we coming together 
uh, is going to usher in the kingdom of heaven. But the kingdom of heaven is going to come out of those people that is in that group. You get what I'm saying? It's like the chosen people are out there. We don't know who they are or how they're going to come together. I don't know if I'm one of them. I don't know if you're one of them. I'm just being led by the Spirit. But all I know that that church or that 144,000 is going to come out of that. Okay? How it's going to be, I don't know. But it is in the same way as I'm being led by the Spirit to do this, this unification with the different Hebrews and mm -hmm. things of that nature. Not to usher in uh, the kingdom of heaven. But just able, just this, this is deal with, because that's God's job. So then for what purpose would you be doing it? Basic Except stuff. Um, let's get along. Uh, uh, economic empowerment. Um, let's change our image. And it, within that, with us doing those type of things, the kingdom of heaven will automatically, it, it will reveal itself. We will figure it out. So what, what happens is sometimes we get caught up with these things that, if we do this, this will happen. Like, for instance, you have groups that want to go back to Israel. And if we do that and start sacrificing in the place we're supposed to, you know, uh, sacrifice or, or things of that nature. And if you do this, that will usher in the Messiah, the Messiah coming back. I tell brothers, don't do God's job. Do what you're calling. My calling is my church. In my little block, you know, coming together with the other brothers, coming together, you know, uh, having a, 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 a government body that we could all respect each other with, despite our differences, and let the kingdom of, of heaven come when it comes. You get what I'm saying? And then that's his, you know, it's not my job to save souls. My job is to be a, de a, a bishop of this church. Mm. It's Christ's job, to, that's his job. So sometimes we try to usher in the, these prophecies by doing, if we do this, this is going to happen. I think that's the wrong direction. I think we should just do what the, the Spirit guides us and then let the chips fall that they may. It's, go I, 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 it's going to happen. And we also have to start thinking that it's going to happen in our generation. It may be our children. We may be the, the, the precursor of that generation is going to be the church, that, that bride of Christ. So, I don't get caught up so much with prophecy anymore, or what we should do. Uh, I look at prophecy, I'm looking at Iran and what's going on there, because that's something that is, is, is we have to look at. You know, we, also within the GOCC, we believe that uh, the four America is going to collapse before the second coming of Christ. There's going to be a gap there that is going to happen. This is something that we are unique in regards of this. Either, Outside of, oh, I think, Behamin, because Behamin used to use a lot of the scriptures or that camp that went to Israel. They said, you know, get out of her, my people, leave Babylon and go back to Israel. We use those scriptures as well to justify we must get out of America because there's going to be a fall of America. So we are what you would call preppers, that we have to be ready for, for that dark time that's going to come when once collapse, America collapse. Um, but I don't worry too much when it's going to happen. I planned... I'm prepared, I got my plan A, plan B. I already told my wife what, what needs to happen, if this happened, things of that nature, but I don't worry too much. And I multitask. I do that when I'm doing this, when I'm doing that. And once we do that, and we don't worry too much about prophecy to the point that we become like a deer in a headlight, we don't do anything because we are, we are afraid, we don't agree what this means, what this prophesies, you know, prophecy. And that's another thing too, that there's been a lot of division over prophecy. We don't agree. To, on prophecy, what this represents. That exists even now? That exists now, yeah. And every camp will, will see prophecy a little different and things of that nature. What I want to happen with this merger is us going into, into scriptures, um, disagreeing without being disagreeable, and opening ourselves to we may learn from each other. And if we don't agree, nothing's going to happen. Nobody's going to die. We're going to go back home and see it see each other tomorrow it's not so, life and death so how do you how do you check the egos at the door so that you can actually achieve that kind of being an example goal? that's the only thing i think energy uh you know it, it, it's powerful and you let you bring out that energy out there and being an example is important i think the more positive energy uh you bring out you know uh smile have a good time this has not to, this this is fun it should not be so tense. A burden, man. A burden. 
you know, uh, which one thing about the other nations that they could be, you know, like I see rabbis debate sometimes. They, they, they're debating, yeah, but, but they don't take it seriously because they clearly they don't care either way because they're not the children of God. You know, <laughs> with us, you know, this is serious to us. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So they don't, they don't, you know, we have to, you know, sometimes understand that it's not, it's not life and death when we disagree in right. regards to prophecy or even Bible breakdown and things of that nature. Let the, it will figure, it, the most I will figure it out. Right. So once we understand that and we, we have, you know, because the spirit, the, the gift of the spirit is joy, meekness, long suffering, you know, uh, you know, that's, you might forget that with uh, Galatians 5, you know, you got to be happy, man. You got to be, and one thing when you look into, and this has been proven even scientifically when, when you ask Martin Luther King and Michael Max and uh, the, the, the Black Panther Party, you know, and you read their books and they actually always ask these questions that they used to joke around even in times of great turmoil. Mm. Because laughter does, is an endorphin that kind of, re, is a, is a uh, less, um, release, the the yeah, it, 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 it released stress. So I believe we gotta be happy, man. We, we can't be angry all the time. <laughs> exactly. So it, it, it's, let, let, let's get that real quick. Let's this go into the fruit of the spirit. This is the book of Galatians, <coughs> chapter 5, verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. Love. Joy. Joy. Peace. Peace. Long suffering. Long suffering. Gentleness. Gentleness. Goodness. 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 Faith. 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 Meekness. Meekness. Temperance. Temperance. You're going to be temperance. Read. Against such there is no law. There's no law against these things. Read. And they that are Christ. If you put on Christ, read. Have crucified the flesh. You crucified the, the old man. With the affections and lusts. Uh huh. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. We gotta, we gotta be happy, man. It's not, listen, we already won the fight. We just going through the emotions. Let me get this last. Yeah, yeah. Read. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, uh -huh. provoking one another, envying one another. Uh huh. Amen. You know, I, 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 I probably imagine the most high and the angels. They're probably like laughing, like, look at these silly Negroes. They won. The victory's already won. They just going through the emotions, and they, they, you know, they. They feel like they are, they are a part of the Most High's program. So if once you understand that, you, you could sleep well at night. You know, mm -hmm. and, and you could release that tension. I don't like negative tension around me. Anybody that knows me, man, I don't like that. I like <laughs> to be happy all the time, man. I don't, you're negative too, dude, man, get out of here. I, I, right, I right, can't right, ride right, with right, that. So that's almost like if you was playing chess and you know you had checkmate in 10. You uh -huh. know you won the game, right. but you got to play those 10 moves. Too. Exactly, exactly. I, I do want to go take a step back a bit because I wanted to touch on the the Bible verse that I like the most mm -hmm. which is in regards to the health yes and in regards to what I talk about in my personal circles um, so go go to uh, Genesis chapter 1 verse 29 I think it is 29 and also Genesis 9 when, when we begin to eat meat right. and then go to also Isaiah I think 11 when it goes right. through, then we're gonna go back to that right and, and wh why I'm saying this is because I, I actually want to extend that to persons that actually may be interested. Mm -hmm. And I think that when I asked you what could people actually agree on, my personal opinion would be that people could agree on the foods. So if not the if not the uh, the commandments or the laws, at least if we have the, the diet the, 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 the dietary lifestyle in check, we could at least come together to the table yeah. and then we could talk about our ideology ideology ideological yeah. differences. Yeah, ideological. ideological differences. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, it's just not about health for me. It's actually a no. But I do believe that it is spiritual because yeah, what that, I that's, noticed, that's what I'm like, getting to. Yeah, like these brothers they are in a liquid fast. You guys been doing it for yeah. It's a spiritual uh, journey to Passover. To Passover. Yeah. It's a spiritual so, journey, right. not just health. Right. So, and I noticed that like I'm a carnivore. Right. I eat meat. Yes. And I, I, I my wife is cutting down. We're doing it, eating meat twice a week. Now. Right. I love meat. Right. But I notice people that are not meat eaters, they're more calm, they're more yes. like laid back. Yes. I'm a firecracker, you know. Yes. I'm a, I'm a, and I think a lot of it is in the food right. and the meat that you eat it. Right. So I agree with and, you. And absolutely. that's what I'm saying in regards to the parasites, yeah. is, is, is my stance that the parasites actually proliferate within the meats, yeah. the fermented food, the alcohol, the yeah. yeast, the fungus, the mushrooms. Yeah. So what I do is we, we show people how to detox the yeast yeah. and once those things are out 
the parasites don't have a place to live. Now yeah. I'm still, I know I'm still parasite filled and I still have worms right. and things like that, but I'm working on it every day and I propagate that to other people and I actually had the testament where people are actually, the, the, there's a brother, he said he used to always tell white lies, but since he adopted the lifestyle in four months, he just couldn't tell the lies anymore. It would right. hurt so much. He could tell them obviously, but right. it would hurt so much. Yeah, it would be a huge conviction. Yeah, yeah, because like Elder Ricard, he always does something in regards when when he had a bad day or feels a certain way, mm -hmm. and there's something always you know stuck for me, he just stops eating mm. right there and there. He automatically goes to a fast mm. because what happened is is the spirits. No. So this this flesh wants those spirits. Mm -hmm. and a, the spirit needs a host. Mm -hmm. So once you start depriving the the that spirit, right, right, that spirit cannot feed out of the body because the body is gluttonous. Right. So you become to eat, you become to you know smoke, you become to so the, the you making you creating, creating the, you creating that spirit is now is it, found a home. Right. So when you start depriving that the flesh, mm -hmm. the spirit is like I gotta get out of here. Right. And I yeah. think that the actual solution mm -hmm. is literally in the in, in Genesis twenty nine and thirty because what I talk about mm -hmm. Is literally right there. Now the preparation might be different. Because right. what I talk about is remove the skins and right. the seeds from the fruit right. and reduce the vegetable vegetable intake. Now if you go to Genesis 29, I think it says pretty much that specifically. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's go there. We're going to go to the evolution. Right, of right, right. And why and so and so and, forth. And how are we going to go back into heaven? Right, right. Kingdom. Uh, read that, brother. 29, I think it is, yeah. right? Oh, you, you guys lead it. Mm -hmm. This is the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 29. And the Most High said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth. Now I want to I want to interject. I don't know. I know you guys do this sometimes, so I'm yeah. following your lead. Okay. The herb bearing seed to me, that's that says fruit specifically because yeah. vegetables d don't have seeds. Right. All right. So yeah, right. Like we are not allowed to eat any fruit that doesn't have any seed. Right. And you might have like grape, grape uh, seedless grapes. Right. Eat those. Yeah, they, they have watermelons that are. GMO. Yeah, all of those. Right. So. Right, GMO. And, yeah, yeah. Sometimes people say to me, "Well, you might as well have the seedless fruit," but right. that's not the case. I'm not pr promoting seedless right. fruit. And, and we're not allowed to have hybrid fru uh, fruits. Mm. Sometimes if you mix certain fruits, everything has to be in its proper order. Okay. Because you 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 that's not how God created. Right. So yeah, so I would say that, that that particular verse specifically talks about fruits. Right. Now if you continue. Yeah. Which is upon the face of all the earth. Right. And every tree right. in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. Again. To you it shall be for me. Right. And to every beast of the earth and to every fowl of the air and to everything that creepeth upon the earth wherein there is life. I have given every green herb for me. Boom. And it was so. Boom. They're right there, mm. it specifically says to me. You guys can correct me because you guys are. No, the, you're right. In, it, in the it beginning, says the, Adam it says the green eat. herb, right. which means the vegetables are for the for the animals or the right. beasts and the fowl, but the fruits are for the people. Right, right, right. And, and go to Genesis to show you when it was the beginning of um, us eating meat. Us eating meat. That's in Genesis chapter 9. Yeah. I got it. Yeah. Um, Alright, I'll just start from the top. Hold on. Right Alright. This is the book of Genesis, chapter 9, verse 1. Now you can start, verse uh, two. uh, uh, verse... Start it, yeah, yeah. Verse 2. No, that's when he put in the, the, the animals in. Go to verse 6. Verse 6? Mm -hmm. Uh, verse 6. Whoso sheddeth man's blood, by man shall his blood no, be uh, shed. 3, I'm sorry. Yeah, verse 3. three. Yeah. That's it. Uh... Genesis chapter 9 verse 3 Every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you even as the green herb have I given you all things Now the way he goes into the word meat mm -hmm. right the word there is devour right it does not necessarily mean because it was understood there was clean animal and unclean animals mm -hmm. and uh, go into that uh, I think in the chapter before Oh oh we know when he ever yeah, know when he separated unclean and clean animal uh, that's in the verse before the chapter 4 uh, uh Chapter 8, verse 1. Start there. It's the book of Genesis, chapter 8, verse 1. And God remembered Noah and every living thing, and all the cattle that was with him in the ark. And God made a wide uh, a wind to pass over the earth. Go to 7, chapter 7, because that's when he told them to put in the, the unclean. Uh, chapter 7, verse 1, Genesis. 
And the Most High said unto Noah, Come thou, all thy house, into the ark, for thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. Of every clean beast thou shalt take to thee by seven. So he, the under, it was understood that the clean beasts with the, the uh, animals that are themselves vegans, they only eat grass. Mm. So the cow only eat grass, mm -hmm. the lamb mm -hmm. only eat grass, the goat only eat grass. So th those with the clean animals, when you go to the dietary laws in Deuteronomy 24, mm -hmm. those are the only animals we're allowed to eat to the same being. Uh, now go back to, to Genesis chapter 9, verse 3. This is the book of Genesis, chapter 9, verse 3. Every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you. The word meat, it goes into devour. Mm. So, all animals are now for you to use up. In other words, a horse is meat to me because I ride it. Mm. Um, a, a, uh, I could use a she lambskin. You know, shoes, I could, you know, shoes. leather shoes. So it's not always eat. Meat does not always mean meat because it's the word that either of the words means to buy or to use. Mm. So every animal should be to be used for yourself. Right, Reed? Even as the green herb have I given you all yeah, things. So even, so now the way you was using the green herbs, now you could use the animals. So it was not necessarily, necessarily food, right. it was you could use up because in, in the herbs you could heal yourself. Right. You don't always have to eat it because uh, um, a cotton is a, is, a, is a plant that you mm -hmm. use to wear clothes. You don't use it to eat. Mm -hmm. It's meat to you mm -hmm. because it's, you use it. Right, right, right. You can apply for your skin, right. You, 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 you could use it up, read. But flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, shall you not eat. Uh -huh. And surely your blood Meaning, and the word eat there is the same word, meaning you should not use, meaning you're not allowed to touch blood because going back to, you were sending back the, 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 the parasites. Like the parasites. Yeah. And uh, uh, that's a whole different thing because what they have proven that the blood uh, dwells the life. And when you, they had been proven that when you take like, like blood transfusion and all that, mm -hmm. you take blood, other people's blood into your mm -hmm. streams, you start having certain memories of those, that individual that they lived mm. and, and, and things like that. So that's a whole so, different... So what happens when you eat like a morcilla, a blood sausage? That's no good either. Yeah, well, because... That's, that's not, that's not um, kosher because it's sausage. Mm. Right. You're right. You know, right. And, and no pork and, 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 and no blood because the blood is in the animal. That's why you got to eat it uh, with no blood because the, the, the life of the animal is in the blood. Mm. And what that means is, is the essence of that animal. Drink. Right, so you got to drain it completely. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, uh, keep reading. And surely your blood of your lives will I require. At the hand of every beast will I require. And at the hand of man, at the hand of every man's brother, will I require the life of man. And this is also, also when you go into the book of Jubilee, it's talking about when the earth gets shifted, literally shifted, and get off course mm -hmm. when a innocent blood gets shed. Mm -hmm. So, and this is something we, even the Native Americans used to do that they only kill an animal when they use it. Mm -hmm. They don't kill it for sports. Right. So it was- And they use every part of it. They use every part of it because everything has to be required. So it, it goes into that and the Book of Jubilee touch on that as well. That the earth gets all the way when, when the earth, when the blood is shed for no reason. Mm -hmm. It has to be for a reason. So if, someone got killed and his blood was shed for no reason, mm -hmm. that person who killed that person must be killed because then that brings back the earth to balance. Mm. So if you notice that the earth is, there's a lot of um, oh, no. righteous killing. <laughs> so you, can, you can imagine how, how, how the, the yeah. unbalanced the earth is. So, uh, and let's go to Isaiah. That's gonna, this is gonna be the last uh, scripture. Isaiah 11, uh, I believe 10. Yeah, we're gonna go back to that. You know, we're not, you know, Carnivores and eating animal is only was a temporary issue. My theoretical hypothesis on mm -hmm. this is because uh, when you go into the book of um, um, uh, and there are different theories about this, right, right. You know, uh, the um, the apocrypha Ezra, it was stating that the Earth is diminishing. So it's not getting as strong as it used to be. Mm. So maybe 
um, the most I say, okay, eat these animals because they are, they're, they're not carnivores. They're, they eat uh, grass, so they're more healthy to at least uh, put in the minerals that perhaps you will not be able to have accessibility because you're a nomadic. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Mm. If you was a, a, a stationary person, you could eat herbs and you could kind of cultivate yeah, the you land. Could, you could plant. And, you could and, plant, plant right. but because you're nomadic uh, and you won't be able to always have it because you have to be stationary, mm -hmm. eat these animals until you back to the your stationary. So, so it, was, it was a temporary situation. In a sense, if that theory is correct, I think that this is a very spiritual thing due to the fact that I spoke to my friend last night about this. I was preparing myself for the interview mm -hmm. and now we're talking about it now. I think that although you said you don't want to put your mind on creating the kingdom, I think we could make a conscious effort to get back to the way it was. The way it was, right? Yeah, we could connect yeah. on that. Don't forget when God, for the Passover, yes. when God said to put the blood yes. over the doorway and then eat the lamb. Yes. So if he didn't want you to really be eating meat, he would have just been like... <laughs> right, don't eat it. Don't right. eat it. No, but I think but, going back yeah. to what we were saying that... When, when, when we begin to eat meat, it can be unjustified. It cannot be justified and... Cannot be justified. It, 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 it cannot be... It, 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 no, no, it can't be unjustified. 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 Oh, okay, and okay. it began with Noah. After, before, uh, 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 post-flood, yeah. we were eating, uh, you know, fruits and vegetables right. and things like that. After that, because uh, the most I looked at the future and realized that we're going to be nomadic. Mm -hmm. So we're probably going to be Mal, uh, malnourished. Uh, malnourished because we will not be able to add these fruits and right, these plants right, right. and things of that nature because we need to be stationary. Now in the kingdom of heaven, we're going to be picking up trees and fruit and it's not going to be a situation that we have to be running around because the earth was going to be our place. But let me, let me show right, you right. in the scripture that we're going to go back to that. This is the book of Isaiah chapter 11 verse 5. And righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins, uh -huh. and faithfulness the girdle of his reign. This is my Christ. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb. See, the wolf will dwell with the lamb, so they're, gonna, they're, no more, they're not going to be hunting each other. Mm. Right? And the leopard shall lie down with the kid. So, so you're going to have leopards and animals just hanging out with one another. Right? And, 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 and almost unison in peace. Yeah, sort of. in peace. Right. right. It's going to say that. Read. And the calf and the young lion. Uh huh. And the fatling together. Uh huh. And a little child shall lead them. And the little kid's gonna have pets. Right? Right? Read. And the cow and the bear shall feed. Uh huh. Their young ones shall lie down together. Come on. And the lion shall eat straw like the ox. You see that? So they're gonna, all animals are gonna be vegans. Right, right. Which is what it was in the beginning. In the beginning. Exactly. So we're going back. I think we got the plan of the Gabal. Right, right, right. We just got, we just got to implement it, man. Yeah, implement it. Little and, by little. And, and little me, by little. Let me tell you something, man. That's how the most how it works. Like, the fact that you, was, you had that conversation yesterday, right. he always put, whenever something is about to happen, he always put that spirit out right. to, 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 to spark that thought. And then when you come to a conversation, it's like without fail, like, right. you know, me and the brothers will be building during the week about a particular topic. Right. And then come time for the Sabbath, the elder will bring forth a lesson. And right. we'll be like, yo, we was just talking about that two days ago, so right. yesterday. Yeah, the spirit so the most I always work and, like and, that. And the way yeah, I look yeah, at these I things agree, is agree. not telling people right. eating meat is wrong. Right. Or evil or wicked. Right. It's more like inspiring and having a situation like these brothers are doing. Okay, let's have a weekly fast. Yeah, right. You know, I told my wife, you know what, baby, we don't only eat meat twice a week for now. Mm -hmm. And then after that, uh, I eventually want to be a vegan. I just love my my meat. I right, love right, right. My steak, I like, you know. So I, I um, and I'm tr what we're doing is we're training ourselves to be deprived of things that we exactly. need and want. Exactly. Right. Right. So let's just say, okay, let's train ourselves to only eat once a day. You, you, so when things hit the fan, you be equipped of eating less or doing with less and then once you're doing you you and this is the spiritual understanding mm -hmm. that the man will not live by meat alone mm -hmm. but, but with the word of god they once your spirit becomes stronger right your flesh will start sleeping and, and taking a less a back a backstage and you're being guided by your spirit what i would say is that i don't know if it's you that love the meat Mm -hmm. But more so the parasites yes. within you that, yes. that wants to meet. And, uh, and yes. the proof the is, is crazy. yeah, the, yeah, the, 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 flesh. the, the proof is that when you stop eating the pork, because at one point you loved it, you loved the smell, right. but then you, you deprived your body of it, 
then you smell you you actually smelled the corruption later right. in your life and right. you had the testament right. and also i'm i'm in concert with you in regards to not really condemning people and what they eat but being a living example right and then you will attract others to what's going exactly. on what you have right. and it's funny because paul dealt with the same situation there was a a strife between brothers yeah but right. Oh, no, okay. gonna, oh, that's 13, right? Romans 14. Romans 14. Well, 14. There was a, there was a, a strike between meat eaters mm -hmm. in the congregation and vegetarian eaters. Right. And they, they were they were judging each other because of that. Right. right. So uh, these Some scriptures are profound. Yeah, these, these scriptures are profound because you you uh, there's nothing new under the, the earth, mm -hmm. and you we we have that strife. I don't say we have that strife now, but I could see that. Mm -hmm. you get what I'm saying? So the way I, I kind of operate in regards of let's inspire to do certain things. So, okay, right. you know, church, we're going to fast this week. Mm -hmm. The church, we're going to, you know, do a liquid fast. Mm -hmm. And then we, 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 we make it fun. Right. And eventually the people start seeing the benefit. Now, we're not going to lie to them again. It's going to be strange and weird and you're going to yeah. get grumpy gonna, yeah. and moody. All detox all symptoms, that, everything. Oh, you, you detoxify yourself with this, you know. Yeah, uh, parasite's not going to want to go away easy. Exactly. It's and once fight. you master that. Exorcism. Exactly. You're doing an exorcism. <laughs> yeah, that's the truth. Right. And then eventually gets easy before you know it becomes second nature. Right, that's right, right, yeah. right, right. Yeah, man. I'm totally for that, man. Um, I have a group on Facebook called the Six Month Optimal Health Challenge. Okay. And we support each other in that in that nature. We talk about what we eat and we show the people what we eat and how we eat and we tell the truth a lot okay. and we slipped up. So that's a great idea. Yeah, that's you good. Know? We would like to be involved with that. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, Beautiful, man. I'll invite you guys if you're on Facebook. I'll post it and you know, I'm with that, man. I'm for that plan all the way, man. I, you know, okay. most okay. definitely. I'm um, gonna have a question here. Um, it says, where is the proof that the Dominicans are Semonites, Puerto Ricans are Ephraim. Ephraims, and Isaacar are Mexicans, Mexicans, in and out of the Bible. Okay, we're going to be doing a 12 chart lesson on that, right. a PowerPoint, but you see, oh, briefly, okay, um, the way you break it down is this way, you know, first you, um, you have to break down geographically outside of the Bible, mm -hmm. geographically, where is the most Hebraic presence in the world mm. dealing with history, uh, archaeology, and things of that nature? Mm -hmm. uh, the place that you have found most Hebraic uh, artifacts in the world is in America. A lot mm. of people don't know this. The Americas. Yeah. The Americas. All this region, you have found a petra of Hebraic evidence. So, the, if you're an investigator, mm -hmm. and your job is to investigate, to try to trace what happened to a people, right. you're going to look at the evidence. So, you first look at the geographically where the place. The second place that they find more Hebraic artifacts is in West Africa. Mm. So you 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 start pinpointing on okay these are the places in which uh, you find most of the evidence you're gonna tr you're gonna go there. And then once you, you you start there then you start going into the 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 prophecy. Like for instance <clears throat> most if you if you line up <clears throat> a rabbi, a Muslim mosque mm -hmm. leader, and a Catholic priest, and you ask them, where who are the Arabs in the Bible? All of them will raise their hand and say, "Oh, that's easy. That's uh, the Middle Eastern Arabs, mm. people from from the Middle East." What uh, biblically or historically you will you you describe you got that information from? Well, you go into the Bible. He was the, the daughter or the son of Hagar. Hagar was one of the wives of Abraham. Mm -hmm. uh, and the Bible says, "You'll be a wild man. You'll be against every man, and, and, and it will be and you'll be uh, against every man. And every man will be against you. Clearly, uh, and you will be blessed and be, and be multiplied and be a great people. You will dwell among your brethren." So when you go into the characteristics of being a wild man, who's wild today? Who's who? Who's against every man, and every man is against them? The Arabs. You know, you go the whole terrorist and Islam thing. Everybody's is scared of the Arabs because everybody's against them. That's right, a prophecy. Right, right. Uh, also, the, the 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 term Hagarines comes from the word Hagar, which is their mother. Mm. So we could go go into secular history to prove, and many Muslim take their ancestry, even the Saudi Arabians could trace their ancestry back to Ishmael right, mm. and things of that nature. So you so you could okay, you pin it down. These are the Ishmaelites, right? Uh, who are the Africans? Oh, that's it. Is those are the sons of Ham? Okay, mm. why? The word Ham means hot. Where do you go? Where's hot in, in, in the world? Africa. 
Okay, uh, Kush, the word Kush means black. This is the, uh, the Ethiopian. So you can start seeing physical and, and, and geographical location where to find uh, these people. Mm. The children of Israel, okay, what is the, the, their, their physical appearance and also their prophecy where geographically they're going to be here. Now this was a little harder because they said they're going to be scattered to the fourth corner of the world, right? Um, uh, but it's certain scripture that gives you certain clues like uh, go to the land of the north. Uh, 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 oh, Zechariah, Zechariah, the second right. chapter, flee out of the, the Babylon, the land of the north. Right? So, uh, and also Isaiah 19, right? Um, go to Isaiah uh, 19 and 16 first and then go to Zechariah. So, in the scripture, it says that the children of Israel are going to leave out of the land of the north and all the other islands that are surrounded. But they focus on the land of the north. So, if you're in Israel and you go to true north, you end up where? North America. That's what's called North America. Mm. So, uh, you got that? Isaiah, Isaiah 19? Isaiah 19? Yeah, Isaiah 19. No, Isaiah, I'm sorry, 16. Oh. Um, and 12. See what that says. Maya. Salakim. That's Jeremiah. Get that real quick. I always get those two. So, um, so geographically, they have the truth of Israel. They're going to be dwelling in the land of the north, which is also called Babylon. Now, mm -hmm. when you go geographically, Babylon, which is Iraq today, is not north of Israel. Mm. You got it, brother? I got this. Okay. Right? So it cannot be talking about ancient Babylon. It needs to be talking about a new Babylon or mm. a daughter of Babylon. And okay. it's referring to this Babylon with the north part of Israel. When you go true north, you end up in America. Let's go there. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 16, verse 14. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Most High. There's going to be a day coming, read. That it shall no more be said, the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. This is where we celebrate Passover. We're about to pass, uh, celebrate in three, four weeks. Read. Mm -hmm. But the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north. The land of the north. Read. And from all the lands where he had driven them. Okay, hold that. Say the land of the north. Go to Zechariah. It says flee. Deliver yourself from the land of the north. From the daughter of Babylon. Uh, this is the book of Zechariah, chapter two, verse six. So we we, we add at as uh, uh, in, in uh, you know in the Bible it instructed the Hebrews that it says that precept must be upon precept, he a little, there a little. So the Bible is like a clue that you have to kind of it's like a puzzle you have to mm. put together to get the full picture. So God, when He talks about a subject, then He goes into another subject. So He He that, that's what He does, right? Read. Ho ho, come forth and flee from the land of the north. Ho, ho, come forth and flee out of the land of the north, read. Save the most high. Save the most high, read. For I have spread you abroad. I have spread you abroad, read. As the four winds of the heaven. Uh-huh. Save the most high. Come on. Deliver thyself, O Zion. Deliver thyself, O Zion. That dwellest with the daughter of Babylon. The daughter of Babylon, which it refers to north or true north. Mm. Iraq is not in the north side. It's towards the east of Israel. The daughter of Babylon is true north. Mm. So now to try to trace the true north, because you can keep, keep going, you got Turkey, you got, uh, you know, you got Europe, and then eventually you end up in America, right? right? So when you got North America, it's called the Northland. The, uh, the Hebrew, uh, there's many Hebrew artifacts in, the, in these regions, mm. right? So therefore, by process of elimination, it is talking about America. You know, it's not talking about China, or it's talking about Germany, mm. or it's talking about Russia. You know, it, it, to the process of elimination. So now you get pinpoint where the children of Israel, majority are going to be in the last days, right? Then once you got that, okay, you could trace geographically where all the tribes of Israel are going to be in the last days. Then you have to then look into try to break it down to try because that's a little more difficult to find what to prove that we are the Jews are very simple because it, you know we got artifacts that's found in America we we got many Hebraic uh, community in Africa that has been they, they know they were Hebrews but to break down the tribe is a little more difficult you mm -hmm. have to go into the characteristics and the prophecy of each individual tribe so dealing with Ephraim I mean dealing with um, Simeon okay uh, you will go into 
the Bible, Genesis chapter 49, when it talks about that Simeon and Levi are brethren. Let's get that real quick. Simeon and Levi are brothers, uh, meaning they're going to be brothers, right? But they, their brothers were all the other brothers. So why would they say Simeon and Levi are brethren, mm. right? And then it goes into uh, cruelty are in their habitations, meaning habit, they're going to be, be inhabited together mm -hmm. and they are brothers in the same place. They're going to be together. So when it says Simeon and Levi are brothers, it just means they're going to be together mm. because their brother with Levi, their brother with, uh, with Judah, their brother with, with Nephtali, their brother with, with, with Simeon. You know, I mean, with, they're all brothers, but why did they pick out these two tribes in particular? Mm. Because they're talking about they're going to be together in the same island or the same area, right? Read. This is the book of Genesis, chapter 49, verse 5. Simeon and Levi are brethren. Instruments of cruelty are in their habitations. So now we got a point point. They're going to be in the land of the north. We identify that the land of the north probability. The probability is America because of all the artifacts that have been found here. Mm. Okay. In the Hebrew, Hebrew culture. Okay. Uh, so who in this region of the world are sharing the same land mask? The Dominicans mm. and Haitians. Right. And uh, instrument of cruelty are in the habitation. What is this? Uh, instrument of cruelty uh, 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 in their habitation. When you go into the Haitian and the Dominican, was very, they're very heavy into what they call Santeria or voodoo. Mm. These are the instruments. You know, they shake the, the bones mm. and the smoke and, and then they, they, they do what well, a hex mm. hell. So, instrument of cruelty and those things are real. Mm. I have seen it. I come from the Dominican Republic. They, they, they deep into this witchcraft and things of that nature. And so when they want to put a hex uh, mm. on you, right? And, and because they are being cruel, right? This is the instrument that they use, right? Keep reading. Oh my soul, come not thou into their secret. Their secret meaning this is talking about Santeria and these witchcraft that they, they tap to, because they're heavily into that, mm. read. Unto their assembly, mine honor be not thou united. Come on. For in their anger they slew a man. Their anger they slew a man, read. And in their self will they dig down a wall. They dig down a wall. This is talking about they're very stubborn and, and they're set in their ways. And Dominicans and Haitians have that principle. They, 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 they have that personality. So when you start locking them down to mm. part of elimination, this is what we're talking about. The Dominicans and the Puerto Ricans. Now, when you go into the, the book, The Lost Tribe and Promised Land, there was a man by Montesinos. Yeah, Montesinos. And he was a Dominican friar. He was an ex-slave. Mm. He was a black man who converted to Catholicism. Mm. And, but he then revealed in his journey, right, he was a slave from the Dominican Republic or the island of Española. Mm. And he confessed, I am a Hebrew mm. of the tribe of what? Right. Levi. And it, there's a picture right now because he was like, um, he wanted to help. And he, he was kind of, he kind of converted into Catholicism to try to help his people. Right, right. And he was one uh, of the brothers who went to uh, South America and also uh, recorded that there were other brothers like Ephraim and Manasseh in the islands. He went to, what's the island? Uh, uh, well, he, where did he go? He went, yeah, he went to... He, uh, was, he was in the Amazon. He was, he was down, like in the Amazon. Yeah, in the Colombian, Venezuela region. Right. Mm -hmm. And then when he, he met some people there, they, they, some Native Americans said, yeah, we're Hebrew Israelite. Because he actually heard them uh, speak the Shemaiah song. Shemaiah, Shahala, Ahayah, Ahayah, now Ahayah, Chai. Right? He, is the Lord God, is one Lord, one power, right? He heard this. So he realized, and he said, are there anybody like you? And they point and they, and they, they split their fingers like mm. this. And so our brothers Joseph right. and Manasseh are on the other side of the island. And they point to Puerto Rico mm. and Cuba, right? And when you go to the characters of the, the, the Taino Indians or the, uh, the, the, you know, the, the descendants of uh, the, 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 the Puerto Rican Indians and things of that nature, they had a lot of Hebraic culture in, right. in their culture. And they, they fit the prophecy of Ephraim, they will be fruitful. They that um, they, uh, they their seed will always be in the same household. Like you will have several generations in the same household. Mm. And their branches will go over the world, meaning their seed. So you have it's very common within their family. You have the grandfather, father, and son marry all all generations living under one roof. Mm. 
That's common in Puerto Rico. So when you start looking at their characteristics, and they mm. dwell in a rich land, and, and Puerto it, Rico right. is called rich port. Right, mm. and, and, and they will say they, they will be uh, fruitful. Right. And the actual word of the uh, of the of the uh, when the the the, the, uh, the Spaniards the Spaniards came. came, Puerto Rico was called rich port, mm -hmm. port of riches. Right. Right, so they, that's what they're called. Yeah, they called the rich port. Right, right. But prior to that, it was called Bo Borinquen, the, right. the island of Borinquen. And mm -hmm. when you look into the Hebrew, the word Barak is blessed. Mm -hmm. Right. So Boricua, you know, and, right. and then also Kua is a is a Hebrew word too. It's Kuaba, right. which means large land. Right. So Brazil is right. a is a is a is a. That's another one. Uh, bra, bra, Brazil, Asher. which was Asher, and, and it was prophesied that Asher would dwell his feet in iron. And oil. Mm. What the top leading iron uh, industry is in Brazil. Mm. Right. So and, it and, says and their feet would dwell in Brazil or right. in Brazil. That's the right. that's a Hebrew word. Yeah, Brazil is the Hebrew word for iron. For iron. You understand? So right. when, when and we're gonna do a a, a a a PowerPoint presentation on this. So it, it, it's you could prove that we the Hebrews to break down the tribes. It takes a little. You need to know yeah. your history and break it down a little, you know, uh, uh, scripturally. Mm. And, but you have to believe in the Bible. You don't believe in the Bible. You say, "Oh, these are all coincidences, you know, and things of that right. nature." But when you go into historically, these prophecies can only fit us. It doesn't fit the Irish mm. or the Italians or the right. Germans. Exactly. Or the, it only fits us. So if you're gonna believe in those prophecies, okay. And we have to go understand that we're going to accept high level of science that we, it went on in the ancient world. Could it be possible that we had tapped into the science of learning the future, or learning, mm. to, you know, understanding the future, or understanding a characteristic of someone that that tr characteristic or trait is going to be passed down to its ancestry, that we tapped into that knowledge, maybe? So let's not dismiss the, the prophecy of the Bible mm -hmm. as being just folktale. And especially if there's been certain prophecy that has been fulfilled, like the book of Daniel has been has been found one of those books in the book of the, the dead. I mean, mm. in, the, in the Dead Sea Scrolls, mm. right? That so we know it's at least 300 BC, mm -hmm. right? And it prophesied about the Roman Empire mm. during that time. That did not exist, okay? And, and uh, uh, the destruction of 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 the temple. Mm. And it specifically said 70 weeks. Mm. And when you break down 70 weeks, it's exactly 350 years, give or take, from the time that that prophecy was made until 70 AD. Wow. Could it be coincidence? Maybe. Mm. Or maybe they were tapping into some high science right. and understanding future events. Okay, so, so I just want to leave it with that. Yeah, on that one, man, we thought we were going to go for 45 minutes. The brother to my right of me, he said, we're going to do the three, he call, you call three hours. Right, right, right. right. We, we, yeah, it's going to be an hour, minute. Hour, hour, hour. Yeah, I don't even know how long, well, you got it. And, um, you know, it was a great interview. We're going to see more of you. I want you guys to, again, say your name, say where we can find you, whether it's a website or the church. Let us know where we okay. can reach you. All right, Shalom. Yeah, Shalom, this is Brother Gabar Yesha Allah from the Gathering of Christ Church. I'm the elder of the Northeast region of the United States. And besides me is Deacon Ayn Wasap. So uh, we, it was a pleasure coming through and, uh, and just chatting. Go ahead, and, and look out for Maccabees TV. We coming. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah Maccabees. You know, okay. Super shout out to Maccabees TV. And just and, uh, real quick, the Maccabees, when you look into the Bible, the Maccabees was the era or the generation that no longer tolerated the oppression that they were facing. So mm. they took, you know, they took arms, they came up, and, and they just they made a stance for their culture and for who they are. Right. And you know we come in the same vein and same light to, to represent true Israel, and, and it's going to be a form for all of our brothers and sisters to get on. Yeah, so, so the Good. channel's up. Subscribe. We're going to be dumping a, a lot of videos. We're going to be doing uh, uh, actually here, um, hopefully in the future, every Thursday. You just have Maccabees TV. We're going to be interviewing different Hebrews from different sects. We're going to be flying people in, and interviewing uh, all sets of Hebrews and. Uh, you know, Maccabees TV is coming soon. Beautiful. And, and special shout out to Nicholas Bookstore, 570 Fulton Street. Yeah, well, Nicholas definitely. Bookstore, man. Outstanding, uh, a, a legacy of uh, black business. And, right. and, and it's, uh, I'm proud to be here and proud to be part of Nicholas Bookstore. Brooklyn, New York. Support black business. Right. Did you say where the where the uh, temple or the church is? Oh. Yes. Our church. We are. We have Bible studies uh, every Tuesday between the hours of six thirty and nine, and we have Shabbat service every Saturday. Uh, the doors open at three around six or seven. 
Uh, the address is 446 Willis Avenue, Bronx, New York. 446 Willis Avenue, Bronx, New York. Be there. We're there every Saturday and every Tuesday for the uh, for Bible studies. Shalom. Yes, Shalom. sir. Yes, sir. We, we appreciate you. I'm ready for all. We'll be seeing more, more of you. All right. Peace. Peace.